Bone Crusher by five lengths racing away. Scores by five lengths to Black Knight. Third placing to my Tristram's belt. 500 out on the Queenslander Y. Julie successful in the thoroughbred club stakes. He's in white colours with the yellow cap in about fourth place. Julie badly needing a run from Miss Exultara and Lady Mantise. It's Pretty Plume in front. Y. Julie's got out. Cap the van struggling. Cammy is still there in the centre. Pretty Plume tackled by Cammy and Lady Mantise. And here's my Cambita and Born a Lady out wide on the track. 100 to go. Y. Julie has taken the lead. My Cambita coming at it. Y. Julie, my Cambita. Y. Julie's one and a half. Head to my Cambita and knows the way third, born a lady. The Herbert Power is the final event, and Faristan ran on well at the end of the 2400 metres. He's in uh, yellow colours in fifth place at this stage. Once he gets balanced up, he's too strong for Feeder Awa, who's the leader. Wider out, Faristan from Hollinger from Sea Legend running on well. Feeder Awa, the leader. At Telak struggling, Faristan running on well down the outside. Feeder Awa at Telak and Faristan. Faristan coming at them quickly has hit the front now. And Faristan's coming away to score by about a length and a half to or either Feeder Awar or Sea Legend. Oh, that was the Caulfield meeting yesterday and what a great day's racing it was. We look now at the TAB information on that meeting and the double numbers were 14 and 3, $1,778.90. Of course, Aborigine putting plenty of value into the dividend for the treble, two fourteen and 3 and the treble, $30,238.90. And the extra double from Caulfield, Bone Crusher, even I picked him, Bone Crusher, beat, uh, beat, and Faristan. $8.30. That was a pretty good dividend there. Well, that's our racing segment this morning. Yesterday in Brisbane, we saw the 69th running of the Cox Plate race. The opening event at Durban was the maiden handicap. It went to Ty, who defeated Longburn Lad, and the winner's stable mate, Dashing Danny, a very good third. And so is Hector of Troy. Getting well back is Bush Ranger's girl with March Rundle, and then Mrs. Bow Desert, now Sharubam at the rear. Coming onto the home turn, 450 metres to go. A Vantam on the rails is the leader. It's a Vantam a half length in front of Longburn Lad as they straighten up. Steels have a length away third on the rails. Followed by Best of Irish. Ty now hooked to the outside, starting a run. Burglars Union behind a whirl of uh, horses, but under the weapon. Then dashing Danny, who's working his way into the clear. Longburn Lad swept up, went to the lead from a Vantam. Here's Ty and Best of Irish on the outside. Dashing Danny trying to go in through in the middle. There's not much room there. Ty on the outside, just in front of Longburn Lad. It's Ty about a neck in front of Longburn Lad and then dashing Danny and Ty's going to be a little too good as they hit the wire. Ty wins it by a long head. Ty first, second Longburn Lad and third dashing Danny. Former Kiwi rider Brian York beaten into second place there on Longburn Lad but he quickly made amends when he took out the second event on shock. Pretty smart three-year-old De Shock, who's who having his first run since June. He's in third place on the fence. He gets a glorious run at the home turn. Followed by Sonny's goal, and over on the inside is Aldenell. Followed by In Her Hand, who's still trapped out fairly wide, racing three deep. Comedian going through in the middle. A break of three lanes to Boogie Delight, extra grand Zany Zephyr, Golden Sea, Sheet Hand. Three further back, Barunga Miss, and then Silent Arrow and Tattoo Road. Coming onto the home turn, 400 metres to go. Rodeo Red's hanging badly, just the leader from Indian Uprising. Sonny's goal to the outside. Shock's got a lovely run on the inside, and he's burst through to go to the lead. Aldenell's coming through a gap in the middle, and so is Comedian, and In Her Hand, an extra grand making ground as well. 100 metres to go. Shock the inside, just in front of Aldenell. Here's Sheet Hand storming home on the extreme outside. Shock is the leader. Sheet Hand and Zany Zephyr's making ground at the end, but it's Shock in front, close to the post, and Shock's a little too good for them. Shock first, second, Zany Zephyr. Now it's going to be close for third. Shock uh, scoring decisively there, and I think he'll go on to score in better class. The third event was the graduation stakes over 1,200 metres and double schedule all the way, only narrowly at the end from Princess Vey. Mr. Match, a good third. And a head away third is Princess Vey. A length then to Mitto Sparrow. Kylie Moon next on the inside in the shadows, making a dash, moving around the outside of Sheer Force. Then just by Mr. Match and Blue Bolero onto the home turn, 400 metres to go. Double schedule straighten up almost a length in front of Power Arrow and Princess Vey on the outside. Kylie Moon saving ground over on the rails and Mitto Sparrow now pulled to the outside and popped the big question. 300 metres out, double schedule, still the leader. He's about a length in front of Princess Bay on the outside, then Power Arrow. Mitto Sparrow's under the whip and then Sheer Force and Kylie Moon double schedule in front. Princess Bay slowly but surely picking him up and Mr. Match is rattling home. Double schedule and Princess Bay, it's going to be tight. They hit it and there's little between the pair of them. Very close. Take your own pick here. It was very tight there and uh, double schedule on the inside just lasting from uh, Princess Bay. We'll show you now the slow-mo of the final stages and you'll note the third place getter Mr. Match has trouble getting a run. Now it's double schedule clear. Look for the horse in the red cap in about sixth place. It's Mr. Match. Now he's uh, having trouble getting a run on the inside of the grey horse Sheer Force. Just getting into the clear now. Double schedule is clear. Princess Vey under hands and heels riding 
taking the ground away from the winner and Mr Match now starting to get into top gear and a very good third. In fact, he was just uh, cut out a little bit there on the line and I think he would have been right in the finish with a clear run. Fourth event uh, was the two-year-old event and Select Air, the odds-on favourite, looked in some trouble at this stage. He's in sixth place in the green colours and the red cap, hard ridden, but uh, in the straight when he gets balanced up, he goes to the post too generously for never too close. Third last out, Beaujolais, then Bon Martins and Capital Khan. Running around the home turn, 450 metres to go, Paddy's Blarney just in front of never too close. A length away third is Fleet Chief, Select there now to the outside. Darren Zarrow just behind them, then exclusive red and Roman Torch, Battle Cry and Grand Slam, but never too close, raced away at the 200 metre mark, he's clear never too close, two lengths in front, now Select there is hitting top gear, he's coming after never too close, never too close is in front, Select there trying hard, he's flying home the favourite now, he's going to get up yes, he's made it, Select there first never too close second, boy it's a raffle for third. Well, that was the effort of a cult well above average, we're going to hear a lot more of Select there, there were the first four from Doombin yesterday program yesterday, it was the Wedgwood Pastries handicap and Coalface, well ridden by David Murphy, just caught Forte, how to flush a good third, the Disappointment again, uh, Prince Frolic. Show making ground. Great night last of all. To the home turn, 500 metres to go. Forte's a touch in front as they set sail for the judge. Forte's just in front of How to Blush on the outside. Yolson Lad going up three deep. And Boyna Snoogard behind them. Then Cold Face Uncle Joe, Prince Frolic on the outside. Then different class further back. Foreign Diplomat and King Show. One in the straight, 300 metres to go. And it's Forte the leader. Forte a half length in front of How to Blush on the outside. Then Yolson Lad. Cold Face coming through in the middle. Then Amboyna and Prince Frolic, Forte still in front. How to blush and Coldface. Coldface coming after Forte. Oh, she's flying home now. Coldface going out after Forte. Picks him up and beats him. I think Coldface has just got up to beat Forte with How to Blush. Lovely too. ride there by David Murphy to score on Coldface, who's certainly an underrated mare. She's now to tackle the Lord Mayor's Cup at Doombin next Saturday. The fifth event was the graduation over 16.15. The odds-on favourite, Burglar of Banff, clear, but he'd done a lot of work in the run. He starts to get tired. Amonex, the winners in the blinkers and yellow and blue colours out in the centre of the track. Amonex, he's pulled the whip on Burglar of Banff and they're coming at him. Phoenix Empress after him on the outside. Burglar of Banff is joined now by Phoenix Empress. It's Burglar of Banff and Phoenix Empress. The good thing's gone, I think. Here's Amonex flying home. Amonex picks up uh, Phoenix Empress right on the line and has scored. Amonex has got up to beat Phoenix Empress. Seventh event was the flying handicap and the backers of the short price favourite Sleepwalk had a few anxious moments at the finish. But he was able to uh, just get home from Lord Penn whose effort was good and My Blue Kingdom and I catching third. Dashed up on the outside of Morton Day, ran to the lead. Lord Penn is now chasing Sleepwalk. He's riding hands and heels on Sleepwalk. Sleepwalk a length in front of Lord Penn who's trying hard. They're clear of My Blue Kingdom. It's Sleepwalk in front. Lord Penn a length behind him. My Blue Kingdom rattling home on the outside. Sleepwalk in front stopping. I think he'll just hang on. Yes, he's lasted. They hit the wire and Sleepwalkers won it by a long head. I think those two place getters there, Lord Penn and My Blue Kingdom, you should mark their names down as ones to follow. Now the final event and uh, Candor had the advantage of the inside barrier and a great start. He is in front turning for home. Bonnie Scott and Pioneer Valley make up plenty of ground in the last 50 metres. Pioneer Valley ever regal. Noted lady on the extreme outside and then Vid Gendarme. Candor's the leader. Babarovic is riding him hands and heels. He's about a length in front of Bonnie Scott, Bell and Girl, ever regal and Count Speck. It's Candor in front. Bonnie Scott trying hard the last little bit. Candor just in front of Bonnie Scott then Pioneer Valley. Candor in front hanging on and Candor has won it. Candor ridden by a very promising young rider, Jason Babarovich, who rode a winning double yesterday at Doombin, and we're going to hear a lot more of Jason. Now the uh, double and treble information from Doombin, 3 and 2, the double, $12.20, 6, 3 and 2, the treble combination, $174.50, and 6 pick from the uh, Doombin meeting, 6, 2, 3, 1, 2 and 3, and Division 1, $8,449.05. We'll take a break now in Sports Inn and come back and have a look at the Rose Hill meeting in Sydney. Yesterday it was Silver Slipper Stakes Day and the favourite Maze K was successful in the main event, but only just. This is the first and Canacea was able to score pretty comfortably from Schwartz Reteller a fair third. Canacea on the outside sticking on, followed by Olympics Dusky Knight Retell and then Trog. At the 200 metres and Schwartz being tackled by Canacea. The little boy's ridden Canacea well, races up and heads off Schwartz and then comes Retell, but it's Canacea. Canacea 
Garcia, the leader. She's coming away. And to the line goes Canacea to beat Schwartz and retail. Northern Ron Fine Quinton and Northern Fine successful in the second and withstood a protest on behalf of the runner-up Tropical the Prince uh, coming from well back Northern Fine. Fine. Starboy on the inside beat the charges third and then on the outside border raid addition bay and one two brave addition at the 200 metres. Starboy after all nighter. Addition bay getting up on the inside but running into a dead end and here's Northern Fine emerging from Tropical Prince. Northern Fine looking a danger. It races to the lead. Here's Tropical Prince coming after it. Northern Find in front. Tropical Prince won't quite make the grade and Northern Find wins it. Northern Find a long neck to Tropical Prince. Third home was Edition Bay. Holding Misty Crony all Garrett the way in the third event. The grey cruising along in front. The disappointment. Ally Streak heavily back to, heavily back to start six to four in yellow colours and hard ridden at this stage. Second last dismissal whips them in. Straightening inside the 400 metres. Misty Crony allowed rain in front. Prince Arthur starting to dash down the centre. France head into the open now, and LA Streak is getting clear. Carmody first to go for the whip on Prince Arthur. It's not uh, travelling all that well, and Misty Crony still leads. France set trying a hard out two lengths to Misty on the outside, Prince Arthur. But Misty Crony in front. Oh, France had lunged on the line. Then came the silver slipper, and it's Mays K doing it very sweetly in front at this stage. At the line, though, he just had enough in reserve to hold off the very stout finish from Marauding. Wangaratta, followed by Golden Drake, Mnemonic, Mighty Willem, and Empire State as last. Around the corner they come, and the leader is Mays K. Second, Judy Ann, White Out, Dream, Faith, Special Finish, the Rails. And further back comes Regiment at the 300 metres. Marty shaking up Mays K, and gives the favourite a couple of slaps with the whip. In fact, more than a couple. It responds, two-length special finish. Marauding on the outside running a great race and then Lily Antoinette Mays K flat as a strap. Marauding on the outside finishing quickly. Mays K is hanging on just the leader from Marauding. Looks to have just won Mays K. Marauding's stable mate full page uh, successful in the fifth just holding off a strong finish from Bow Kingdom. At the 400 and Blue Region clear picture and Grey Coma striding along three in line Vanbrugh behind them no scruples getting a needle eye split then Avon's glory full page and one Bow Kingdom and Regal Shower. Plenty of possibilities 200 to go the roughy Avon's glory's gone to the lead full page second on the outside here's Bow Kingdom and Pico starting to join in full page the inside and Bow Kingdom full page Bow Kingdom Bow Kingdom on the outside, full page, full page, full page, a short half head bow kingdom. Third home was Pico to the corner. Raffalini was expected to have an easy assignment in the sixth event. He's the grey horse moving to the outside now, but he had to be desperately ridden to get home from Lady Zilla. Straight at the 300 metres, half shilling just in front of Runner Shore. Lady Zilla third and Raffalini out in the centre. At the 200 metres, by golly, Raffalini's taking a while to get past half shilling Lady Zilla and Runner Shore. Now on the outside, he gains the upper hand, Raffalini. Marty working overtime on him is just in front. Lady Zilla's kicking back. Raffalini just the leader. Yep, it's one at Raffalini's, given those that have taken the short odds a few worries. Kahana Bay at 25 to 1 in the seventh event. Kahana Bay racing in red blinkers and draws clear in the last 100 metres. Zafri stable mate all Chan. Paris Knight on the outside is battling on well. And then Kahana Bay and Fitzhugh followed by Kenzai. 300 metres to go now. All Chan just in front of Paris Knight. Kahana Bay on the outside. It's running a bit of a race. And then Kenzai followed by Faris King. Sound horizon going backwards. Kahana Bay in front with 100 to go from Paris Knight and then Kenzai. But Kahana Bay is safe. Safely holding Paris Knight. One for the bookies. Kahana Bay has beaten Paris Knight. And then Kenza at the full final event went to Magic Gleam in the yellow and black colours of trainer Harry Clark. Has a bit of trouble getting into the clear in the straight, but uh, once he does get uh, into the open, he really goes to the post generously. For Magic Gleam to come through at the 300 metres, and Market Zip joined by Tats Gold. The run almost closes for Magic Gleam, but the gap opens and Magic Gleam comes through, and then Black Valley. Magic Gleam takes the lead now. Black Valley second, Market Zip feeling the strain, then Patty Smith, but Carmody rides for dear life on Magic Gleam, and it's coming away. And Magic Gleam wins at a length and a quarter. Well, that was the silver slipper card from Rose Hill yesterday. Now the TAB information on the Sydney fixture. And the double there, 5 and 10, paid uh, $200.30. The treble, 1, 5 and 10, paid $690.70. And the extra double from Rose Hill, 2 and 1, paid $9.30. We'll take a break now. I'd like to do that. <laughs> it must be a great race because Franco Callahan had heard about it. I he's, heard you just telling me he's that. He's gone home to watch it. <laughs> what a race it must be. Well, you say, hello, Frank. How are you? You're safely installed now in the, uh, the lounge chair, the feet up. If Bone crush is coming up shortly. If it wasn't illegal, I think he'd tape it. <laughs> Play it back. The first event... 
uh, from Mooney Valley yesterday went to Lord Tiamo, but the uh, great run came from the runner-up Marwong, who really makes up ground in the last 50 metres. Then top of the Second event the went to Glowing field. Idol, another Give great finish here. Eloquent Edition just wheel. fails to pick up the winner. Eloquent Edition round the world trying to bullock its way through. It's getting out now, gets cut off again. It's coming at the leaders near the line. However, Glowing Idol just in front of Eloquent Edition. They hit it. Glowing Idol or Eloquent Edition. On the another success here for Solar Princess, who sprinted up quickly as they straighten and goes on to score easily in the Silver Jubilee Stakes. Hidden power down the outside and double match running on. But Solar Princess canters to the line to win two lengths to Hidden Power. Mrs. Stoffel third at the top. The Bart Cummings trained Splendid Speed took over at the home turn and goes on to score well here in the fourth from Reputed. Splendid Speed shot away halfway down the straight. It's no race. Splendid Speed coming away in the run home to win by more than two lengths. Reputed second, Deedle third, aiming for. Now for the big one, and Bone Crusher is uh, the horse in the whitish colours, four from the outside, our Waverly Star in the green colours, one from the outside. Now let's uh, have a look where Bone Crusher is back behind them, at the rear as they settle down, trying to get near the fence, and our Waverly Star's caught deep. Roman Artis and Dandy Andy took them out of the straight, a length and a half, Imprimata and Society Bay deep. They were followed then by, in the centre of that bunch, March Akita drawn the rails. Two lengths further back, the Filbert and Drought, a length to Waverley, our Waverley star who's still wide. Two and a half lengths then a Bone Crusher, followed by Dinky Flyer, Aberidi, and last of all, Tristram. At the 1400, Roman Artist, a length and a half in front now from Dandy Andy and Society Bay the outside. A length to March Akita and a length and a half drawn, tucked in on the fence from Imprimata. Our Waverley star still three deep in the race and on the rails, the Filbert and Drought the centre. Two lengths to Aberidi, Bone Crusher on its inside, two to Dinky Flyer and a length to Tristram. They've got 1,100 to go, Roman Artis cutting out a fair pace, out a length and a half, Society Bay, clear second now. On the rails, Dandy Andy and a half length to March Akita, two lengths to draw and having a good run from Imprimata. Our Waverley star will want to be fail up, here's Bone Crusher, he's pulling to the outside, shooting around them and our Waverley star's going with it. Aberidi at the head of the others with Drought, Dinky Flyer, the Filbert and Tristram. Here come the New Zealanders, our Waverley Star and Bone Crusher. They've raced to the lead, 600 out, have they gone too early? Two lengths to Drought running up the third from Society Bay. They were followed then by Drawn under the whip at the head of the others, Dinky Flyer. But our Waverley Star, he got a half length to Bone Crusher. He's gone for the whip on Bone Crusher. Three lengths to Drought, followed then by Dinky Flyer and Drawn. But the two great New Zealanders have come away on the turn. Our Waverley star, a half-length bone crusher. The big red won't give in. Drought running on. Bone crusher responds to the whip. The roars of the crowd. He races up to our Waverley star. A hundred out. Bone crusher, our Waverley star. Stride for stride. Nothing in it. Our Waverley star, the round bone crusher, the outside. And bone crusher races into equine immortality. Well, what a race, the uh, Cox Plate yesterday. There's been some great performances. Kingston Town scored in three of them, and his last was a particularly fine effort, but I don't think uh, we've seen a better win than Bone Crusher. We'll slow you now, the slow-mo. Here they come to the home turn, and it looked like our Waverley star had him. Bone Crusher coming again on the outside, and he just wouldn't be denied. Our Waverley star is about, a, oh, I suppose, a neck clear at this stage. You'll notice uh, Bone Crusher gets up a bit of momentum here on the corner, and then when they come out of the turn, it's Bone Crusher who's in front, probably a long head in front of our Waverley star. And I think at this stage most people thought Bone Crusher would go on to score. But watch our Waverley star really draw on his reserve and he kicks back on the inside of Bone Crusher and races again to about a neck clear. And Bone Crusher, well a lesser horse, well, his heart would have been broken by now, but he really just gets balanced up and that one final surge to the line. It's our Waverley star in front. Russ Hins would be on his feet by about now, I would imagine. But here comes Bone Crusher, just a little too strong at the finish. But uh, both horses, fantastic performance. And what a race the Japan Cup is going to be on November the 23rd when those two horses clash again. Now the uh, sixth event, there was a bit of an anti-climax, went to Raveno defeating King of Brooklyn and Dead of Night Third. Then El Vaquero, but Raveno clear, King of Brooklyn coming again on the inside. Raveno and Nick in front of King of Brooklyn. He's flat out, he's just in front. Raveno, he'll win. About a Nick to King of Brooklyn, they got tight. Seventh event, now this is the Mooney Valley Cup and Reckless Tradition defeats uh, Cativo. Third was Joel, a major driver, good fourth. Oh, it's bumped with Cativo, skidded on the corner. Further back, Pacific Air, Joel getting out now from Sea Legend. 
hanging in badly. It's reckless tradition in front, 50 to go. Carabo coming at it. It's going to hang on and win, however, down to the line. Reckless tradition. Ahead to Carabo. Well, there was a protest lodged on behalf of uh, Carabo or Cativo, the runner up there. It's, uh, uh, you'll notice in the slow-mo, as they come into the turn, now it's uh, Reckless Tradition on the outside and Cativo on the inside. Now, just as they come out of the corner, you'll notice them bump. Now, Stewards claimed that it was caused by both horses shifting ground rather than just Reckless Tradition moving in. Now, uh, at this stage, Reckless Tradition is a long head or so in front of uh, Cativo. There they bump as Reckless Tradition moves in. It was quite obvious how far the inside horse moved out was uh, problematical. But at this stage, uh, Reckless Tradition's just that... Uh, head or so in front, he maintains this advantage to the line. Cativo uh, wouldn't concede an inch. Now, a couple of fair runs in this, Joel third and a very good Melbourne Cup trial from Major Drive fourth. I'd overlook the effort of Zamazan to finish eighth. It wasn't suited by the uh, muddling speed and the uh, way they sprinted away. And both Major Drive and Zamazan are still in with uh, strong chances in the Melbourne Cup. They're going to be better suited by the 3,200 metres and a more truly run affair. Final event yesterday, a good thing beaten in this Campaign King. Special's clear. Campaign King, the baldy face horse, in fourth place. Campaign King is getting clear on it now. Be too late, I think. Special in front. Campaign King flying on the outside. Special, the leader. Oh, Campaign King second. Gee, should have won. Gee, should have won too. Campaign King narrowly beaten there. Now the TAB information and 2 and 12 the double, $92.30. 13, 2 and 12 the treble, $1,041 even. And the extra double from Mooney Valley, 3 and 12 paid $24.10. This week in racing... Cup day yesterday at Doombin and a boomer of a day for trainer Bruce McLaughlin winning a double and also underrated young apprentice Darren Goff who also booted home two winners. The opening race on the CIG sponsored meeting was the Oxygen Novice over 1350 metres and here the favourite from the McLaughlin stable was lots of rule racing in the yellow with a white cap. Here's all the action from the track. Mark Roman Fantasy, the leader, three parts, Maroubra Beach moving closer. Wonder Bellevue Shadow, third, the rails, Royal Cone. Bellevue Shadow, three parts to Royal Cone of fourth, then Media Star, Sunny Melody, Gold Sweep, three wide. Lots of rule poking through in the centre. Super Grand second, last, and Maracaibo Bay, a length and a half away at the tail. They packed up past the 500 metres peg. Maroubra Beach joined Roman Fantasy. Royal Kona third. Gold Sweep went up to fourth. Bellevue Shadow waiting for a run. Lots of rule taken to the outside and then Super Grand as they turn the bend. Roman Fantasy and Maroubra Beach turn the corner together. Royal Kona third. Gold Sweep out wide. Then Bellevue Shadow and lots of rule hooked to the outside. Roman Fantasy led past the 200. Gold Sweep the first challenger. Lots of rule running on. Gold Sweep hit the lead. 100 to go. Roman Fantasy he kicks again but lots of rule descends on them lots of rule raced up took the lead away from gold sweep and lots of rule wins the first lots of rule beat gold and your race caller there was terry spargo doing an alan thomas impersonation at the start of that call the winner lots of rule is prepared at thornhill park by bruce mclaughlin owned in sydney by george diamond and ridden by stephen schofield it wanted to duck in at the 50 meter mark but lots of rule was just too strong more wins in store for that galloper who impressed first up race two was the australian airlines maiden over 1350 meters sadly there were two falls in this race you'll miss the first one but see the second one just after they come to the 400 meter mark treasure in front on the side at the 900 leads by a length best of irish goes to second, a length away Mighty Mission then Pilgrim's Angel, Courage G, Cloud Lady, followed by Calling Facet Long Burn Lad, Lord Barnaby further back with Proud Interest, Gentle Pagan two lengths to Hendra Hussey from Flute Player, then Mangella, Longhurst Manor a long way back in company with Sonic Grey, there's another fall on the turn of the riderless horse, now another one, the rider of Calling Facet's been tipped off Oh, what an action-packed race as Best of Irish went to the lead at the 250. The boy pulled the whip and Best of Irish booted. Led by three, Proud Interest goes to second, then Ruby Treasure and Courage. Best of Irish in front, Proud Interest trying to reach it, but Best of Irish is hanging on. Best of Irish two in front and wins the money. Best of Irish first, Proud Interest second, Courage third. The first starter calling facets unfortunately broke down coming to the corner and was later humanely destroyed but the good news if there is any is that uh, riders Chris Carney and Gavin Birra weren't seriously injured. The winner of course is by Lindhurst Studs Grand Shorty Air as trained by Neil Strong in Brisbane and ridden by Tony Earhart who wielded the whip like a windmill over the concluding stages. Race three the CIG graduation stakes and here fair power and Wandering Duke were the favourites but Wandering Duke blundered at the start. In this race Seaview Girl was a good run she was checked several times and blocked for a clear pass. 
passage. Three lengths to Jaur. Lockyer onto the pilot on the side of the track at the 600. He leads by a length and a quarter to Pinehurst. Lady Reason travelled up to third. Malabar fourth, but under pressure. Then Ballet Master followed by Gerald Road. Law Power taken to the outside. Seaview Girl coming off the rail from Intrepid Jewel, then Rue Lockett, Wandering Duke well back as they turn. Lockyer Dollar thundered into the straight and led by a length of Pinehurst going after him quickly. Lady Reason on the outside, then Gerald Road. Ballet Master gone and Seaview Girl looking for a run. Pinehurst led at the 150. Gerald Road gets the split. Pinehurst in front. Gerald Road goes after Pinehurst but can't reach him. Gerald Road can't get to Pinehurst who's fighting on too well and Pinehurst wins the money. Pinehurst has beaten Gerald Road. Photo third. Lady and Pinehurst was the first leg of a successive winning double for Darren Goff. The winner is prepared by Gillian Lewis who reckons that Pinehurst might get two miles of the Queensland Cup in three weeks time and chiropractic treatment by Michael Bryant of Waterford paved the way to Pinehurst's return to form. Race four was the Argon Starlet Stakes over 1,010 metres for the two-year-old fillies. In this, the odds-on favourite Lady Elwes missed the start for Darren Goff, but she powered through in the purple, yellow sleeves and the red cap got a dream rails run. In this race, splendid feeling was well back to grey filly. Touch worse than midfield, then Balkan Bell, Galahad's girl. Well back is Natile and Golden Bait a long last when they approach the bend. Lady Elwes got right up on the inside. She's gone from last to first. And as they swing around the bend at the 400 metres mark, Lady Elwes burst away. She opened up a break of four lengths to wine glass bubble, Bracken Flyer, Tinsel Girl on the outside, and then Splendid Feeling under the whip, but Lady Elwes nicely clear. 150 metres out, Lady Elwes leads by five lengths. Tinsel Girl and Bracken Flyer battling out second and third, but Lady Elwes looks extra impressive. She races away and wins easily. Lady Elwes first, Tinsel Girl second, Bracken Flyer third, Gulf. And keeping the 100% winning record intact of Lady Elwes was trainer Billy Calder and rider Darren Goff. She's by uh, Rosemount Farm Sire Call Report and an outstanding youngster is Lady Elwes. In that race, the bubble burst on splendid feeling and the fourth place getter can be followed in two-year-old events, Golden Bait Rocket at Home. That's the first half of the program at Doombin Delta. The CIG Lord Mayor's Cup over 2,020 metres. And in this race, the Sydney side of Peaceful Joe, the well-travelled Lord Hunderley, and the locals Prince Frolic and Forte were the best back runners. Here's the action the from the track. Diplomat Wonder Lord Hunderley, a length away, potential. In top swing, three wide, working around cold face. Peaceful Joe on the fence. A length of Secret Bay, then Prince Frolic cluttered up on the rail. Different class starting a run, going up very deep. So is Mona Star. Bucking rip well back from King Show and you know Bingo had dropped out to the rear. Prince Frolic back fourth last and hard ridden approaching the turn. Bold Endeavour three parts in front, 420 out. String of Pearl second, then Foreign Diplomat Forte close enough if good enough. In top swing to the outside from Lord Hunderley and then Peaceful Joe. String of Pearls had gone to the front at the 250 from Bold Endeavour. Forte on the outside with Lord Hunderley. String of Pearls leads at the 150. Forte cutting it down quickly with Lord Hunderley. String of Pearls still in front. Forte and Lord Hunderley lunging at it. They come to the line. Three of them split it. Oh, I don't know. Forte in the centre, string of pearls and Lord Hunderley across the track. Take your pick from that. A real head-bobbing finish, wasn't it? The winner was the syndicate-owned Forte, prepared at Thornhill Park at Caboolture by Bruce McLaughlin. A staying bred horse by Noble Bijou, bred in New Zealand, ridden by ex-Kiwi hoop uh, Brian York and now probably going to be set for the Brisbane Handicap. Race six was the Champagne Starlet Stakes for the two-year-old fillies, 1,010 metres the distance. And in this race, Autumn Smoke Runner's favourite in the white with the grey sleeve and the blue cap. Some money for Emmy, Emma Luisa in the black and pink colours. Fair second, last and touched by Love at the rear. Poetic Sound went to the lead on the side at the 650 by three parts to Flowing Easy. Autumn Smoke a half length away third. One to Emma Louise on the inside of Black Brilliance, followed by Princess Pagale, Little Quist Deep, then Diamond Fantasy. Sparkling Spirit well back from Hasty Fair, Sharp Last Village Flirt and Touch by Love at the rear as they turn the bend. Poetic Sound and Flowing Easy straightened together with Autumn Smoke coming at the pair of them. Emma Louise fourth and Black Brilliance on the outside. Poetic Sound led at the 200. Scriven pulls the whip on Autumn Smoke to go after Poetic Sound. Poetic Sound and Autumn Smoke, they're going stride for stride. Autumn Smoke going the better now, Take the lead from Poetic Sound and Autumn Smoke wins. Autumn Smoke beat Poetic Sound. Black Brilliance ran third. 
Autumn Smoke is the first progeny of the imported stallion Immokalee to win in the Brisbane metropolitan area. He's a first season size standing for Murray Murdoch at Craigo Stud. The winner is trained by Roy Dawson, ridden so well by Shane Scriven. The third leg of the treble was race seven, the CIG graduation over the 1350 metre distance and here the ex-Kiwi, Corinda Park. You'll see him leading, he ran his favourite and he's got the purple and the white armbands. Here fours, a length and a half, Catman do, three deep around Autumn Moss and Gallery Man on the fence. Monrula widely and nearest going through in the centre. Two lengths to Rain alone, a half to Enfield Prince, one Karade around Spark of Life and a length and a half to Ram Nala. Corinda Park travelling well, coming to the bend at the 400. He leads by two and a half lengths in the shadow second, but under pressure, Copper Flyer on the rail. Denmark deep, sheer force looking for a run, then Autumn Moss and Catman do to the outside. Corinda Park in front, 200 metres left to go, he's gone further in front. He leads by three lengths, Gallery Man bursting up on the fence, goes to second. Then Copper Flyer, out wide Ram Nala, but Corinda Park is killing them. Corinda Park three in front of Gallery Man and Ram Nala and wins easily. Corinda Park first, Gallery Man second, Ram Nala third. Corinda Park is trained on the Gold Coast by former New Zealand enthusiast Kay Tinsley, was handled by Ken Russell. Corinda Park is owned in Sydney and has an effortless daisy-cutting style of galloping which should see it win many more races. Race 8, the final event, the CIG Novice, over the 11-10 metres. They went lickety-split here in an open betting race. Barclava ran his favourite. There was money for Bonnie Scott up with the leaders on the corner in the pink and brown colours. By Barclava and Hoya Flight, a length and a half to Eldenell who's trapped deep on the outside of uh, as they travel down the side Syriana in company with Noble Dior then I of the Tiger, Golden Reflection second last and East Ocean Pride whipped them in, Chevelle Jazz moved up deep to join Bonnie Scott, one wide and Whiskey Coin on the fence and they made a line of three coming around the turn a length away, no antidote, then Ming Jade Civic Centre, Yellow Boy taken to the outside and Barclava behind them they've turned the bend, Bonnie Scott Whiskey Coin joined by no antidote Civic Centre running on and Barclava gets the split in the centre. Civic Centre hits the front, 150 to go. Barclava goes after Civic Centre. Civic Centre a half in front. Barclava can't reach Civic Centre. Civic Centre holding Barclava. Civic Centre beat Barclava. Third, maybe Whiskey Coin from Hoya Flight. Then and Civic Centre was a good left-handed whip display by young Gold Coast apprentice Glenn Haggerty. The winner is prepared at Cloncurry, 2,000 kilometres away, so the win was certainly well-deserved for connections. At Doombin yesterday, we had the six pick and also the double and the treble. The treble was, uh, the, of course, the numbers are wrong there, and the treble, and so were the horses. Of course, the winners there were four Pinehurst, four Forte and ten Corinda Park, and the treble paid $467.80, and the double was won by four Forte and ten Corinda Park. We do apologise for that. The six pick went off and paid about $9,500. That's it for racing at Doombin yesterday. I'll be back after this break with all the... Honours went to international jockey Kevin Moses. Not long back from a successful stint in Ireland, Moses rode a winning treble including the TAB Daily Double and the D TAB Daily Double was trained by uh, Neville Begg. The opening race was the two-year-old fillies over 11, 10 metres and here the favourite at 7 to 4 was Celebrity Lover. Through the back, Regal Home and Postage due, and then comes Love and Spoonful and Cindy M, followed by True Quest. They set sail for the judge, and Magic Heart in front, narrowly from Coronisa Queen. Celebrity Lover coming at them, followed by a pyre, then Postage due, and Dara Princess is going backwards. At the 200 metres, Postage due on the outside, looking the likely winner. Oh, it swept past those on her inside in one fell swoop, and the Sangster own Postage due is streaking away from Celebrity Lover, and the line goes Postage due to Blitz. Celebrity lover, third posse magic heart, then truth. Postage due is by Luskin Star, trained by Brian Mayfield Smith, ridden by John Grisdale. Race two, the four year old and over over 1200 metres. Lunch on Sunday outside the leader in the red and orange colours as favourite. Lunch on Sunday, Marty's had to pull the stick on the favourite. Vainglorious third, and then Tad's gold on the outside from Boy Brisk. 200 metres out now, without reason in front. Shortening stride, Vainglorious the real danger. Followed by Lunch on Sunday, without reason just in front. Vainglorious cutting it down on the outside. And as they hit the line, the inside fillies just won without reason. Reckon she's one of the nose to Vainglorious without reason. The third, Tats Gold in front of... Without reason is prepared by Tommy Smith's former stable foreman, Bob Thompson, ridden by Craig Carmody. Race three, the T-Roll Colts and Geldings over 1,110 metres. They straighten for home, boasting on the pink colours in the rails as leading for Mark de Montfort. Uh, outside that runner, in the white with the blue cap, is Lord Kensington, handled by Mick Dittman. The runner-up, Flotilla, Matthew Carl riding hard there in the white and the black cap, switching back to the rails now you see Flotilla. And the fourth-placed Hindenburg in the blue with the red cap is ridden by 
uh, Kevin Moses was spec from 40s into 16s, but an outstanding youngster is boasting goes to the line for an easy win, trained by Vic Thompson Jr. The winner is by Crown Jester and cost $160,000 as a yearling. Race four, the three-year-old and over 1,900 metres. Island, Joe, latest word on the outside. Rosnat's given up, and then Rocket Lad and Zabari. Latest words, the first challenger to like a topic. His rider's gone for the whip. On the outside, Sir Walk Up is starting to make ground now, and then Island Joe and Rocket Lad. Latest word is almost level with like a topic. Sir Walk Up's hanging in under pressure. Latest word puts the head in front. Sir Walk Up battling on with like a topic, but latest word will win the money. Latest words notched up the hat trick and has scored from a tighty. Sir Walk Up on the outside. No doubt Sir Walkup unlucky. If he hadn't have ducked in, he would have won. Race 5, the handicap 2,000 metres. Fitzhugh on the rails in the black with the red cap is leading. Kahana Bay, the challenger in the yellow with the mauve cap. Hanging on. Two lengths to Sir Tipler, followed by Lady Nuke on the outside and then Sprightly Native. Panama Jack not finishing quickly enough. Kahana Bay raced up to almost join Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh's hanging out onto Kahana Bay, who's put his head in front. Kahana Bay and Fitzhugh. Kahana Bay, the outside, doing a shade better if they reach the line. Yep, Kahana Bay and those Fitzhugh, I believe. Third at home being Lady New the sixth race, 1,300 metres for three-year-olds. Francet at even money in the white with a red cap is leading. Western Ace in green with a purple cap up with it. they straighten up now and Francet leads more than a length on Western Ace and Dittman getting desperate on Western Ace. Classic Hand is getting out now and Prince Arthur starting to put his mind on the job and then Douglas at the 200. Western Ace got to tighten up and dropped out and Prince Arthur moved up to head Francet. Classic Hand getting between them now. Francet fights back. Prince Arthur's just in front. Classic Hand cutting it down. Prince Arthur, Classic hand oh well now classic hand has lunged at prince arthur on the line there's nothing really between these two horses hitting it classic hand did arrive in time to win race seven the handicap 1500 meters the favorite was a smith trained kate charlotte in the blue colors near the lead signal the noise running home down the outside from so torrid at the 220 and jack's fighting on taken on now by signal to noise on the outside and signal to noise driven to the front by k moses looks like a hat trick coming up for kevin moses signal to noise is streaking away from Kate Charlotte and Sen Shire, and Signal to Noise wins it by two lengths. The final race for three-year-old fillies over 1,200 metres. The hot pot, Sunalong Lass, the leader in the red with the green sleeves. Sunalong Lass, 3.50 to go, taken on again by La Maison. Third is Flying Kiss, getting between the two leaders and a length classic victory, and then comes Trace of Silver, wide out Hangaroa. Sunalong Lass fighting on well for play, and it leads about a length and a quarter Flying Kiss, holding her at the moment. Then classic victory and La Maison, but it's all Sunalong Lass. Stu Plane rides hands and heels, and Sunalong Lass streaks away, wins it by three lengths to... Sunalong Lass certainly racing in stout heart. Five wins from her past six starts, including a hat trick, and ridden by Newcastle based jockey Stuart Plain. Now it's time for the TAB information from Rose Hill. Yesterday, the treble six latest word to Kahana Bay, seven signal boys, $311.50. The double two and seven paid $53.70. And the extra double yesterday on four classic hand and seven Sunalong Lass returned $31.10. That's Rose Hill dealt with, and after this uh, commercial, the two year olds over 1,000 metres. And here, proven valour was backed into favouritism, seven to four into five to four, racing in the dark colours and the white cap. Half lengths, Miami Vice and Omnicore going to the inside, but 300 to go, Rancho Rule has taken the lead, it's got the upper hand of Proven Vela, a long gap, Miami Vice and then Omnicore. Rancho Rule of first up in a Maribyrnong plate, he knew what he was doing, Marconi is going to walk in. Rancho Ruler wins by about three or four lengths, Proven Vela second, Omnicore galloping when it's all over a length away third, a lot... That winner by Rancher, a winner for Darren Gouchy. Race two, the Carbine Club Stakes, 1,600 metres. The 300 from Devon Duke. Seaswell under the whip in third, placing as cheers for us, has kicked away. Drew two in front, Seaswell knuckling down to it now under the whip. Warren coming with a very late run, it'll beat them all. Seaswell gets up to the lead with 100 to go, but Warren's grabbed them in a stride. And Warren has bolted in on the line from Seaswell. Third placing has gone to cheers for us, followed by... That was the first double for Gauchi. Race three, the McKinnon Stakes. Watch for Attalak in the blue, Mr. Lamondi in the red and purple, just now running last in the yellow, being ridden along, and born to be queen in the green for Melbourne Cup trials. Then two lengths further back at the head of the others, Joel caught wide from colour page the centre and born to be queen. Two to one, Chantur, and three lengths away last just now. Going to the 1500, and Roman Artis cutting out a merry pace, about three lengths direct mail. It moved off the track and nicely allowed Periscope to go up on the inside. Then about two 
two and a half lengths at Telek, Mr. Lamondi, a length and a half colour page. Then Born to be Queen, Joel Hardridden, two to one Chanteur, and three or four lengths to just now. Past the 1200, Roman artist by five lengths to Periscope. Ahead, direct mail, a length to at Telek, who's got away from Mr. Lamondi, two lengths back. Colour page going forward, a length and a half Born to be Queen from Joel, two to one Chanteur, and now just now starting to go forward. 900 to go, Roman artist is eight lengths in front. In second place, Periscope from Direct Mail, a length and a half at Telek, who's travelled well. Mr. Lamondi struggling from Colour Page, and there followed further back, Joel Born to be Queen, just now on Chanteur. 600 out, Roman Artist, about five lengths to at Telek. Periscope's hanging badly, taking Direct Mail off the track. Coming home well, Colour Page, and there followed then by Mr. Lamondi. In the straight, Roman Artist two in front, but at Telek's moving up stylishly to him. There, three lengths in front of Colour Page, Mr. Lamondi, and then Periscope is well beaten. It's Roman Artist responding well to the whip at the 300. A length to Atalek, Colour Page, and Mr. Lamondi getting up on the fence. Atalek's got Roman Artist now, drew to the lead. Mr. Lamondi can't go on. Atalek's in front, and the English horse is going to win the McKinnon. Ah, oh, he's won it well. Colour Page finishing on nicely. But Atalek's won at a length and a quarter. Colour Page ahead to Roman Artist third. Rain Lover back in 68 won the McKinnon and the Cup double. Can this horse repeat the dose? Race four, the Wakeful Stakes, 2,000 metres round the world was favourite in open betting race. Likado getting up the tackle, Shapery. Inchidoni running on well, Likado won't go straight. Shapery the leader, Likado getting at it now. Diamond Shower and Inchidoni on the outside. It's Diamond Shower coming at Likado quickly with 100 to go. Inchidoni wider out then, Blazing Fontaine. But Diamond Shower went to the lead and Diamond Shower is going to win it. From Inchidoni, maybe Blazing Fontaine out wide, third in front of Lee. Brian Mayfield Smith's Diamond Shower will take beating in next Thursday's Oaks 2. Race 5, the Victoria Derby. We pick up the leader, Imprimar 2, with Drought in the dark colours and white cap. Drought getting clear with Raveno is coming out after the leader from Tristram, but Imprimar refusing to give in at the 200. A length and a half to Raveno and Drought. Raveno and Drought are getting to it now. It's three in line with 50 to go. Raveno and Drought have drawn level with Imprimata. Raveno on the inside puts his head in front. Raveno's won it. Raveno's beaten Drought by a nose. Third is Imprimata. Raveno is by Rindu Sire, Voodoo Rhythm. Race six, the Black Douglas. Cavalry on the outside fence. Special on the inside. Cavalry, a half-brother to Sea Road at Stud in Queensland. Uh, he's clear out there. It's Cavalry out wide. Special the rails. These two are well clear of the field, having a decent go. Both jockeys have gone to the whip, so there's not much between them. It's Special and Cavalry, followed by Goose Lane. Special, the rails, Cavalry coming home, best out wide, and Cavalry wins it. Cavalry from Special. Princess Race 7, the Gadsden Stakes, down the straight six. Down the outside, it's Taj, Quillow, Blazing Keel, No Parole, and Bullion Broker in line. The outside have it. It's Blazing Keel, Taj, Quillow, Bullion Broker might be coming home better than anything in the centre. Bullion Broker's gone to the lead with 100 to go. Taj Quillow coming at him. Bullion Broker, Taj Quill, Taj Quillow going home best now. And Taj Quillow's won it from Bullion Broker. Either Richfield's led or Kiwi Kong third from... Race 8, the Dalgetty over 2,500 metres. Good Melbourne Cup trials by Sea Legend in the red with a white cap running about fifth. And Empire Rose up three wide throughout in the yellow colours. Black Knight fourth. Sea Legend's had a good run over on the inside of the next bunch and easing off the fence now from Blondo. Two lengths Indian Raj and run for cover. Two lengths to Major Drive, Waratah Bay and then Rising Fear. As they came to the corner, 600 out. Goldwire about to be joined by Cartivo. Wonder Empire Rose has never been on the track. Blondo out in no man's land. Black night looking for a run rising fear also here's major drive starting to wind up an indian raj badly pocketed cartivo's got gold wires measure ran alongside it at the 400 sea legend pulled out with empire rose they're coming at the leaders indian raj can't win and major drive out wide cartivo in front empire rose joined it sea legends out after them but empire rose in front with 250 to go from cartivo sea legend trying to pick them back now on the outside Sea Legends coming at Empire Rose. Empire Rose still in front under the whip from Cativo, but Sea Legends wearing it down on the line. It's going to be close. Sea Legend. Sea Legend. A punishing ride by Darren Gauchy gives that young hoop three wins on the day. A terrific day for Darren Gauchy. And uh, Sea Legend is now automatically qualified for the Melbourne Cup, but by golly, it was a good run by Empire Rose. Now, TAB information from Flemington yesterday. The treble won 10 and 4, $551.70. The double 10 and 4 paid $136.10. The extra double 4 Cavalry and 8 Sea Legend paid $43.90. That's racing action from Flemington. Of course, everybody has a fancy for the Melbourne Cup, and mine's born to be queen. I thought it was a bottler of a run in the McKinnon yesterday. I'll be back after this break with all the harness.
Ready. Light on racing. And they jumped away in a good line near the inside. My Tristan's well away well with Mintmaster Sea Legend just now and on Chanteur. Mr. Lamondi began pretty well. Fida Ward's going up early. Waratah Bay's very wide in the early stages. Joel midfield with Born to Beat Queen. Ford Ice World back Indian Raj. At Talax moving up quickly. Uh, Kiwi's behind a bunch of horses. Our Sophia's midfield and dark and true to the rail. Kiwi's second last. And the other great New Zealander, Sam Hassan, last of all. 400 to go the first time. Fida Wara link that Talak the outside. My Tristan's Bell defence. Sea Legend three deep in the centre. Mintmaster on Chanter. Joel a bit deep. Empire Rose. Black Knight the rail. Then Waratah Bay a link. Mr. Lamondi midfield outside our Sophia. They're walking early. Tudor born to be Queen. Ford Ice a length and a half. Rising fear from Dark Intruder. Final advance in the centre and Indian Raj three deep. Two links. Reckless tradition. Samasan Kiwi. And Gauchi has just now last of all. 35 links first to last, 2200 out in the cup, they leave the grandstand behind them. And Fidawad, two links to At Talak and My Tristan's Bell and they're going slowly. Two links away, Sea Legend outside, Mintmaster link to Joel. Wonder One Chanteur getting a nice run, Empire Rose travelling beautifully today. Rising Fury can't hold it any longer, Skelton around them, 3D, Black Knight, Waratah Bay. One to our Sophia, then Mr. Lamondi, born to be queen, moving up in the centre, Indian Raj, three deep. Four dice on the inside, about a link further back then to Kiwi, improving today with reckless tradition. Then final advance, Sophie just in front of those, two to Samasan, a link further back, Dark Intruder and two to just now. Halfway in the cup of the 1600, Peter Wara, half rising Prince, a link My Tristan Spell with that Talak the outside, one to Sea Legend and then Joel, three deep. Mintmaster the inside, a link further back, Empire Rose, Mr. Lamondi three deep, but he's going all right. On Chanteur at the 1400, around the outside, Waratah Bay taking off from Born to be Queen, Indian Raj, Black Knight, our Sophia. Final advance world back, Kiwis back with those horses, making a run around them, Samasan, four dice world back, and one of the last is Dark Intruder, and just now also starting to take off. They go up towards the 1,000 in the cup. And Fidawara half in front, rising fear the outside, one to at Talak, my Tristan's Bell. Sea Legends moving up quickly with Joel out a bit deeper on the track and moving around them, Mr. Lamondi's going well. A length to Mitmaster coming into the picture, Empire Rose in that group of horses with Black Knight, they start to bunch up in the cup. Waratah Bay's wider out, Kiwi's behind those horses. Samasan's trying to thread his way through, four dice out wide, final advance well back, just now's about third last. Born to be Queen in front of those horses and Dark Intruders last into the straight. They've got 4.50 to go in the cup. Fidawa joined by Rising Fear. At Talak about to come at them from My Tristan's Bell. Mintmaster, Joel with a run. Empire Rose, Mr. Lamondi, Born to be Queen running on in reckless tradition. At Talak at the 300, first away from Rising Fear. Two links to Sea Legend, further back Joel. Mr. Lamondi, Kiwi with a late run. At Talak in front from Rising Fear, Kiwi running on with Sea Legend. Clark's got a run, I think. At Talak's a leap for a half in front of Rising Fear. Colin Hayes wins his second cup. At Talak, a half Rising Fear. Third Sea Legend, Kiwi, a mighty run for. Then Empire Rose, reckless tradition, Mr. Lamondi. Behind them, my Tristan Bell with Fidawa. Joel was in that group of horses with Born to be Queen and now Sophia and just now. Black Knight, Mintmaster, on Chanter and Samasan. Indian Raj behind them with Waratah Bay and then further back, final advance and Fordyce. And one of the last to finish in the cup would have been Dark Intruder. What a great race. I notice the Kiwi's rider has dismounted. I hope he's all right, he's not. He's broken down, Kiwi. What a tragedy. I hope he's okay. He's back behind at Talak. Noel Harris is off Kiwi. I thought for a moment, Des, at the furlong, oh, well, that he was going to swamp them. I don't know whether he's bolted after the post or coming to the line, but he was just about going to get them, Bruce. It was a great call, I must say. Gee, you, you, I thought there was excitement there, but you kept your cool. How, I don't know. Four that last nine. horse you asked me to look for, I forgot all about it with the excitement of the race. Well, Colin Hayes. Unbelievable. He's win. a great gentleman. He's yeah. a wonderful trainer. 4, 9 and 24 it is in the Cup. 3.21.7. Michael Clark has ridden some great winners. But he's never won the Cup. 
And today he joins the great riders that have won this mighty race. And he rode a superb race, Des. He was ah. in the firing line, and look, he's got it one, well, and he must know. And here's Kiwi on the left. Yeah, Kiwi out right in the middle of the track. I thought that it was going to come along and do the ultimate get there. But uh, Sea Legends run a good... What about Bobby Skelton on Rising Fear, too? He was pumping away there, Bob, and nearly got the... The money, but Atalak in the blue colours, Rising Fear out, Sea Legend coming into third spot now, and Kiwi dying gamely there, and Empire Rose just behind them in the yellow colours. But there it is, Atalak, second uh, was uh, Rising Fear. And sea and Legend, third, sea legend third. 435 and 160 in Victoria, Rising Fear 640, Sea Legend 405. And the crowd will go wild, they'll doff their caps and anything else they might have on today when Matt Talak comes on and walks through the roses. A horse who ran fourth in the English Derby, a son of an English Derby winner. He won the Grand Prix to Parry at Longchamp over 3,000 metres, a Group 1 race. He's owned by one of the most famous and wealthy owners, and here's Ron Taylor with Colin Hayes. Let's see if we can pick up what Colin's yeah, saying. He's ever stood it for seven times. <laughs> And, and you were thrilled oh, when you sorry. got to the, hit to the front. Did you think you had it? Did you think he'd hang on? Yes, he, he rode him so so superbly. Uh, he'd rested him and rested him. And, and Thompson Jones, his, his previous trainer, said that if he was held up and held up, he had a brilliant burst for 100 yards. He just had to be presented at the right time. So uh, And don't he, underestimate your own part. You must have had him fit as uh, hands could make him on the day. Right. Well, he'd had a, a dream it. preparation into it. He'd never had a setback, and his form was perfect. Really. Did you set him for this race particularly? Yes, yes, he's been set for Ha, ha, well done, Charlie. Oh, Lovely to see you. And what about the shake? Will you, how would you get in touch with him? Well, it's been, in, it's been filmed direct to on satellite to Dubai. So he'll know about it he now? He'll be watching it now. On, probably on Channel 10. Yes, he will. Thank you very much. Two most exciting horse when he puts his best foot forward ready to go gates crash open away they go looked almost a perfect start romantic red was away well near the outside beginning quickly lloyd's investment and here we go they're all coming across well pay homage is showing speed towards the rail side baptized tucked in behind them so we'll go left to right romantic red beaten for speed by lloyd's investment manda shot just behind them with roscoe prince and bogan lord Sun salute right up there earlier. Model Sun might be in front from Pay Homage and Trista Bell. Tucked in behind them is Push Gar. Hillcrest Lad looks to be last. Baptizers in the middle of the track and racing Greenlee. Specialty outside of him and well back out of the field behind them is the Hillcrest Lad, as I mentioned. As they come up with about 600 metres to go, it's Model Sun about a head in front of Pay Homage. Call me the breeze. Mystic Monarch Push Car. Baptized going well about eight off the fence. I think he might be in front from Lloyd's Investment. Roscoe Prince. Further back on the field behind them is Arch Sovereign, but Baptized looks to be well clear past the 200 from specialty. Pay homage and call me the breeze. Baptized in front. Here's Pay Homage out wide out after him from specialty. Baptized is clear though. Pay homage tries to wear him down. They go to the line and Baptized has won. Yes, I reckon. From Pay Homage. A good go third. You've got Pushkar there with specialty and not far away. Sun salute and Bogan Lord. Further back, Mystic Monarch with Trista Bell and Call Me the Breeze. Romantic Red never really got into it from Model Sun. Uh, then Lloyd's investment back with those horses would have been Roscoe Prince. Mandershot pulled up quickly after the line. Hillcrest Lad was amongst the last to finish. And uh, judge calls for a camera. Judge calls for a camera after race number seven. Do you think he hung on, Ron? It's a close go. Uh, he will pay homage. He was a surprise winner at Mooney Valley a couple of starts back. I think there is a bit of an advantage in the last uh, He's had to stop riding him a couple of times there. You notice Mickey yeah. McLeish, he's stopped twice. And the horse is really drifting now down towards the fence that's now. Right. He's veering off. He's getting tired now, but uh, but he's last to the win. The Maybe margin will be interesting. There won't be a lot in it. Uh, but back... Opportunities. It was a fine ride by young Clark. He's a very impressive young man. We'll show you now the uh, 1986 Melbourne Cup. Uh, the winner at Talak was widely drawn, but Clark uh, had him in a great position as they turned out of the straight. And uh, really, he looked the winner a long way from home. Good effort by Rising Fear to uh, get uh, second placing. Uh, Larry Pickering, the uh, tomato farmer, come cartoonist, come racehorse trainer, almost uh, pulled off 
the uh, Melbourne Cup, a race which he had uh, been saying all year he was going to win with Rising Fear. Now he's saying 1987 is going to be his year. And Sea Legend uh, finished in third place despite suffering a, a rather nasty cut to his hind leg. But it's uh, vastly experienced, a very good judge, certainly put big wraps on him after this falling win. In smart time, the uh, times throughout the day were very quick yesterday at Eagle Farm. The track was really on fire and so easy to see. Clock 58.3. That's him moving up four out. Scorpion, Blazing James and Hardy excited. Well in the straight with 350 metres to go and so easy to see. Dashed up on the outside, he ran to the lead. It's so easy to see about a length in front of Powering, who's under the whip, and then Country Rain, Grand Wagon. Mr Mercury starting to make ground, but so easy to see. Slipped away from them with 100 metres to go. And he's got it shot to pieces. So easy to see is racing away from the opposition in the run to the line to win by five lengths. So easy to see first. Second, Mr Mercury. Third, Powering. Dusty Carpet finished a very good third in the Minic Stakes at his only previous run to uh, the second event yesterday. He started at 9-4 to four on. He didn't have a lot in reserve at the finish, Dusty Carpet, but he was able to score from Super Amber, who made up a good ground. There's plenty of money for Super Amber, and Pete Tony are a good third. Tony are in second place. There are a couple of lengths in front of Super Amber, who's trying hard. Dusty Carpet, the leader. He's got the favourite under a little bit of pressure. He's about a half length in front of Twig Tony, and then Super Amber. It's Dusty Carpet in front. Push right out at the end. He's going to win it. Super Amber's getting pretty close to him at the end, but as they hit the line, Dusty Carpet wins it by three quarters of a length. Dusty Carpet first, Super Amber second, Twig Tony at third. The third was the Oxley handicap and uh, a stout staying performance by Pinehurst who looked in trouble halfway down the straight when Secret Bay got right alongside him but he kicked back strongly. T Biscuit a battling third. 300 metres to go, Pinehurst the leader. Secret Bay is a bit of a danger on the outside and T Biscuit into third place then muted in top swing and King Show. Secret Bay dashed up on the outside, put his nose in front of Pinehurst who's kicking again. It's Pinehurst and Secret Bay. Pinehurst drifting out a little bit, he's just in front of Secret Bay. They hit the line, Pinehurst. Pinehurst has beaten Secret Bay with tea biscuit falling. The punters who laid the odds on about Roman Draftsman in the fourth had uh, plenty to worry about halfway down the straight, but Shane Scriven was able to drive him home secure. over Granite. Well, Royal Machine third. To go. This leader coming back to them pretty quickly. Indian uprising about a length and a half in front of Granite. Then Royal Machine and Roman Draftsman on the outside. He's got the whip on him, but he's working out after these leaders. It's Granite just in front of Roman Draftsman, Royal Machine and Indian uprising. Granite still about a neck in front of Roman Draftsman, who's trying hard. Granite and Raymond Draftsman is going to be close. It's a bob of the head. They hit it, and there's little in it. Raymond Draftsman or Granite. Pike finish this one in third place, Royal Machine. That was the fourth from Eagle Farm yesterday. We'll take a break now in sports scene. And it went to Palomino Star, but the Courage Award must go to the runner-up, Lord Penn. He's clear at this date. Palomino Star, the horse behind him in the yellow and blue colours. And really, Lord Penn showed great courage. 250 metres to go. He's given the favourite a couple of cracks with the whip. Lord Penn about a length and a half in front of Palomino Star, who's trying hard on the outside, then insatiate. Lord Penn in front. Palomino Star coming at him hard. He's going a bit better than him, Palomino Star. He grabbed the lead and he's beaten Lord Penn by a half length. Distancia third. I think a runner to follow out of that event was the third place getter, Distancia, whose best performances have been over more ground, and that was his first run since June, so there should be a lot of improvement in him. The uh, sixth event was the Fig Tree Pocket Graduation, and the winner, Luskin Knight, is darting back towards the inside in the blue colours and just scrapes through a run there. Luskin Knight's going for a run on the inside. There's not much room there. And then Ballet Master, Silver Magnum, the leader. Luskin Knight is clear now, and he's charging at Silver Magnum. Luskin Knight coming out to Silver Magnum. Silver Magnum and Luskin Knight, they hit the wire. Luskin Knight's got up to win it. Luskin Knight, I'd say, has just beaten Silver Magnum. Gerald Road held on for third. Jeff seventh event produced a scintillating first up performance by Alamander Boyd. He uh, broke the track record, won 9.1. He overcame a wide barrier in his lack of recent racing. He showed great acceleration in the straight. He had the race in his keeping this far from home. Now the second place and then Mido Sparrow on the outside. Mr. Match and Creo Line are weakening out of it. Alamanda Boy is the leader. 150 metres to go. He's three lengths in front of Mido Sparrow. Ran out a charging home on the outside. But this is a great first up win by Alamander Boy. He wins it by three lengths. Alamander Boy first, Mido Sparrow second, Ram third then. Good training performance by John Wallace to produce Alamander Boy first up and he wrapped up successive races when Face the Stars took out the final event under a nice ride by Ken Russell. Northern Express hooked to the extreme outside. Space Hunter back running about seventh but he's got into the outside now starting to wind him up and he's running on fairly well although he is a little bit erratic. Uh, the leader Golden Reflection darted up on the outside. Hits the lead. Now Face the Stars is coming out to Golden Reflection. Over on the inside is Ballon Girls. Face Hunter's all over the track. He can't win. Face the Stars kicked up on the outside. Ran to the lead from Golden Reflection. And Face the Stars is two good wins at almost the length. 
Face to side first, Golden Reflects in second. Now it'll be tight for third. Rodeo Red has flashed home. Final event there to uh, Ken Russell on Face the Stars. Now the TAV information for the Eagle Farm meeting. And uh, <laughs> that's a bit tricky. Uh, the double numbers were, I'll read this I think, 9 and 3 paid $31.10. There we are. The treble, 10, 9 and 3 paid $186.30. We'll take a break and a red letter day for young apprentice Mark Wickens who scored his first win when Picata took out the uh, sixth event. The opening race at uh, Randwick went to Shiana Miss who uh, was comfortably in front when they straightened and easily maintained her advantage in the straight to score by three and a quarter lengths. Next was Fashion Plus and then a deuce and two to Red Express. At the 200 metres and the leader Shiana Miss a couple of lengths on a deuce and Lightning Echo and then Fashion Plus on the outside. Shiana Miss a hundred to go more than a length in front of a deuce and safely holding her. Then Lightning Echo followed by Red Express but it's a breeze for Shiana Miss and Shiana Miss wins at about four, three lengths. Second event went to Atlantic Mission, who was well handled by Brisbane rider Doug Messingham. Atlantic Mission at this stage is running in third place. The baldy face filly just easing to the outside, and she goes on to score from the favourite Sun Along Miss. Sorority Bell. Now Classicella headed quickly by Sun Along Lass. Atlantic Mission after Sun Along Lass with a well fair of Misty Crony. A race into Atlantic Mission and Sun Along Lass for favourite. Atlantic Mission on the outside doing by far the better than Sun Along Lass. A minute away third is Misty Crony, but a great effort under 56 by Atlantic Mission. All oh, wanting to pull up near the line. Third event went to the former New Zealander El Toriador, who's the uh, widest runner of the leaders there in the yellow colours with the black cap. He uh, did a good job to score because he raced very greenly from this point. With Mr. Shush, 250 metres to go. Densarco put the head in front. Now El Toriador comes at him. C sounds a half length away third. El Toriador almost level now with Densarco. He put his head in front. El Toriador. C sounds kicking back on the inside. El Toriador still in front. Hold C sounds at El Toriador. El Toriador. Fourth event went to the outside of Perspiration. He was first up, but he ran on very strongly to defeat Schwartz and Twin Alps. Getting a lovely split now. Twin Alps next, and then Schwartz at a length of Sly Lad. Coming to the 250, and Schwartz on the outside has swept up and takes the lead narrowly. Missed the siren, goes after him. Followed by Rama King, Twin Alps, and here's Perspiration. Perspiration right down the centre of the track is finishing with a withering run. And in fact, he's racing away from Schwartz and Twin Alps and Perspiration. The fifth went to Kensai, who was well handled by Gavin Duffy to defeat like a topic. Kensai midfield at this stage, easing to the outside with the red and green colours. Now Arrow King has drawn level with border right, like a topic charges at the pair of them. A length to Kensai, followed by Balciano and Copper Wing. Like a topic puts the head in front, 100 metres to go. Kensai battling on with Arrow King. Here comes Kensai. Kensai after like a topic. Kensai pokes the head in front, and Kensai wins the money from like a topic. And came young Wickens on Picata, who gets a nice run through on the inside. He's in third place at this stage and angles back towards the rails. Putting real pressure to the leader, Claude Zacks, and noses him. On the inside, Picata angling for the split and getting it, and then Gaius running home well. At the 200, Carl pulls the whip on Mighty Tower. Gaius the outside, and Picata on the inside. Picata's the one, and little Wickens pulls the whip on Picata, and away goes Picata from Gaius and Mighty Tower, and that's little Wickens' first whip. The heavily backed Pico successful in the seventh. Uh, at this stage he's in third place, the horse with the breastplate and the blue colours. Paris now getting into the open, and then Bumgarby followed by Senjaya. At the 200, Pico's coming out to Calaboose pretty quickly. Deed Star third, and Paris Knight on the outside battling on. But Pico's drawn to the lead now. A hundred to go, it's Pico a length and a half on Calaboose and Paris Knight, then Deed Star. But Pico's going to be untroubled in the run down of the line. And Pico scores convincingly. This is the final event. Unfortunately, we have no audio on this. Now, the, the winner, latest word, is the uh, baldy face horse three out in the yellow cap. Uh, on his immediate inside is Atatari. They're claiming the lead of the American quickly, but it's latest word on the outside. Matthew Carl just going hands and heels. His uh, latest word just inclined to shift in a little bit. Uh, the three-year-old Colt is uh, clearly too good for his opposition. He sprints away. Atatari battled on strongly to get second, but it's latest word in a canter. Untroubled to score by a couple of links there from Atatari. It uh, seemed to have a fair bit in hand too, uh, latest word, it was a good win. Now the TAB information for the Randwick meeting, 2 and 5 the double, $27.70, 3, 2 and 5 the treble, $1,596.90, and the extra double from Randwick, 3 and 1, paid $31.90. We'll take a break in sportsy and come back shortly to have a look at the final the week, of course the Melbourne Cup Tuesday, Oaks Day Thursday, and rounded off on a high note yesterday with the Ampol Stakes and the Queen Elizabeth Stakes.
Uh, nice to know a battle was successful. Robert Holmes of court uh, picked up just a, a round of drinks under $300,000 when his horse Chanta Claire took out the Ampol Stakes. Made me feel really good. Opening event at Flemington yesterday went to Durham Rivers and continued the great run by Michael Clark. And this uh, Colt absolutely walked in. Going quickly past Bowl Seymour as Durham Rivers. It's gone, Bowl Seymour. Durham Rivers is well clear. It's raised three lengths in front here from Bowl Sculptor, then Bowl Seymour. Oh, and the one on the fence, Norgwin Hunter. Well, it's going to run nearly last. But Bowl's uh, going down to the line. Durham Rivers about six in front. And it's going to win by five lengths. Second Bowl Sculptor, third placing to Bowl Bumping finish in the second event with Lucky Witch successful and was standing a protest. The unlucky runner, Lockley's daughter, who gets stood on a head just near the line. 400 to go from Lockley's daughter under the whip. Lucky Witch, La Zip. Mixed blessing starting to run on fashion. Fun starting to come home hard now. Toy Fountain's not in it. Lucky Witch got to Captivone with 150 to go. Fashion Fun trying to thread its way through. Lockley's daughter got knocked over. Mixed Blessings in the centre. Fash Fun coming at Lucky Witch. Lucky Witch has won it. About a head to Fashion Fun. Mixed Blessings third. A never say die ride by Greg Hall lifted Cooper's Gold a victory in the Graysmith Stakes. Capstan Bay ran on late. Cooper's Gold coming at it, battling on as Sir Lustrious Beagle Bay and Game Trooper all coming into the picture. Behind them, Carlisle Ben and Capstan Bay. Cooper's Gold took the lead. Beagle Bay comes at it quickly, dives in, cuts the Lustrious off, hits the leaders. Beagle Bay put its head in front of Cooper's Gold. Capstan Bay down the outside. It's flying. Cooper's Gold and Beagle Bay going together to the line. It's Cooper's Gold doing better and Cooper's gold won it. Fourth event was the Queen Elizabeth Stakes and Colour Page, beautifully ridden by Jim Cassidy, was too strong for Northern Find and Joel Third. Bourbon Boy around the outside with Rheingard making some ground, Goldwire, then Northern Find. Norfolk Bard second last and never over last. Lance Lotto at the 700 on the corner. About a half length clear from trade line, hard ridden. Joel's done it well, third, going very nicely. Then I'm a red man, here's Rheingard round the outside from Pegham, I guess. Joel needing a run now. Colour page full to the outside and then Farrah stand. I'm a red man went up very quickly to trade line and went past Lance Lotto. Joel is uh, struggling for a run. Colour page coming at them quickly now. Wider out, Farrah stand commencing a run from Rheingard and Northern Fine. It's Colour page to the lead at the 300, clear of Farrah stand. Joel, Northern Fine running on well down the outside, but Colour page holding them at bay with 50 to go and Colour page is too strong. He's going on to win it well. A length and a half, Northern Fine. Joel third. And came mighty Mick Dittman on Shonda Clare running second at this stage. He's always in command in the straight. At the 800, Roman Arta's bowling a length in front of Shonda Clare, a length and a half. Black Arrow running a race. Then Avenotto aiming, moving up. March Akita can't get on the track from Eastern Classic, follow the light. Then came Splendid Speed, giving them a good start from Deedle on the inside and Riverdale still making ground out wide. Into the straight, 500 to go. Roman Arta's left the rails but led a length and a half. Shonda Clare. Black Arrow going up on the fence, Avenotto out wider and then came Eastern Classic, Bicentenary threading its way through, Splendid Speed struggling and so is March Akita and further back Dinky Flyer starting to come home with Federalism but Chanticleer has swept to the lead with 200 to go, raced away from Bicentenary, Roman Artist, Dinky Flyer running on with Avenotto but the big $200,000 uh, bonus is coming up, Chanticleer wins it well, Eastern Classic second, Bicentenary third. Tricky finish to the sixth event. It looked like Rompelong was set for a comfortable victory in the last 50 metres, but Iola jumped out of the ground to nail Rompelong in the last hop. They're followed then by Tipling coming at them strongly. Honeybridge at the 300, tackled by Rompelong. He had a look over the shoulder on Rompelong. It cantered to the lead. Tipling is third, then Samara. Rompelong just in front of Honeybridge. Tipling starting to put in those giant strides, but this has got clear. Uh, one coming home very fast, just behind them, Iola. Rompelong in front. Oh, it's close. Rump along, maybe, from Iola. Big plunge landed when Blazing Keel, a Sydney sprinter, was successful in the seventh event. Blazing Keel about three or four in in the orange colours. Then Ramify, hypertension. Aqualone is up there with them too. Spring Pleasure and Warlike. But Blazing Keel drew clear now with 300 to go from Princess Dram, Aqualone. Then no parole, military plume. Blazing Keel giving them a galloping exhibition. Drawn well clear as they go to the post to win by about three lengths. Princess Dram second, Aqualone third. Cavalry in a canter in the final event. He's in blue and white colours racing outside the leader and he just drops them off in a minute. Further back, Bow Lane and uh, Captain Police a long way back. Harry's gone for home on Cavalry at the 300. He shot three lengths in front of Just Common at Bow Lane. Then Winter Captain Police. 
Oh, look out, Indian. Here comes the cavalry. He's five in front and he's going to walk in. We have to wait a long time till the last, but the good thing wins. Uh, cavalry by six lengths to Bow Lane. Red Henry's run third. One to follow Cavalry will have to take short odds, but I think he's got plenty of wins in store. Now the TAB information for Flemington, 1-1-1, one, one, and one. that was easy to get. The treble, $113.30, 1 and 1, the double, $39.10, and the extra double from Flemington, 5 and 14, paid $30.80. Is well below par, but I think he likes the Gold Coast Air because he bounced right back to winning form yesterday to uh, combine with Ken Russell to take out the Brisbane handicap. First event went also to Russell on Tinsel Girl, who looked in trouble halfway down the straight when Autumn Smoke challenged strongly, but Tinsel Girl on the inside kicks very strongly. 250 metres to go on Autumn Smoke. She cruised up on the outside of Tinsel Girl. They're locked together. Zampatti struggling a little bit in third place and then Vane's sister. Tinsel Girl's kicking again. It's Tinsel Girl and Autumn Smoke. Both boys have gone for the wet and Tinsel Girl's doing better than Autumn Smoke. Tinsel Girl, two good wins at a half length. Tinsel Girl first, Autumn Smoke second and it's tight for third. Zampatti or Vane's sister. Back in fifth. First uh, city success for Northern Rivers trainer John Everson, but uh, might be the first of many with Tinsel Girl, who looks pretty promising. Second event went to Stars Are Easy, and this was a top class ride by Cyril Small. Stars Are Easy powered home from midfield at the home turn, did a nice run through. Uh, just had to weave a, a little bit of an erratic course at the 200 metres to get into the clear. Went on to defeat Law Power and Icy Nip third. 400 metres to go and You Can loomed up on the outside of Minuta. They're together. They're fighting it out. They're about a half length in front of Icy Nip who's coming with a well-timed run. Lovely promise in the middle making ground to the outside Law Power and then bold profile. Minuta, You Can, Icy Nip. Stars are easy going for a split. Lovely promise Law Power just behind them. March Rundle on the inside. Icy Nip in front. Stars are easy. He's the one. He's got the gap. He burst three, grabbed the lead, and as they hit the wire, he's won. Stars are easy first, photo second and third between Lord Power, Icy Nip and Minuta. Exciting finish there to the second event, and a first-class ride by Cyril Small. We'll show the uh, slow-mo now. There's an instant tear just about the 200 metres. Now, the horse in the lime green colours angling back towards the inside is Stars are easy. On his immediate outside is the tiring You Can. You'll notice in a minute gets a, a pretty bad prat, and uh, You Can had to be yeah, checked severely. Stars are easy, just moving around the heels of Minutia, and there's You Can. Uh, really just uh, put right out of the race, although he was fading out of the finish anyway. And stars are easy, driving through now in those lime green colours. Over on the inside, Minutia, Law Power down the outside, and Icy Nip holding on for third. But uh, very good ride there by Cyril Small to uh, score on stars are uh, easy. Third event, and Ian Botham's horse, bit of a lark, led throughout. He's under pressure here, but he really kicks under the whip. Followed by Hoyer Flight, huge success. Lord Tumbler and Eldonel down the outside, then Golden Reflection, bit of a lark has kicked. 200 metres to go, bit of a lark, a half length in front of Gold Sweep. Hoyer Flight making ground, and then Barclava on the outside. It's bit of a lark in front. Hoyer Flight starting to make ground with Barclava. Bit of a lark in front, hanging on. Yes, he's too good for them. Bit of a lark first, tight second and third. A photo, Barclava. Flight. The fourth event was the Qantas graduation over 1,500 metres and some doubted Rodeo Red at that distance. His recent form has been consistent and uh, he raced right up to that form yesterday. He had a lovely run through on the inside when Hastings off ran wide and Jamie Bayless making every post a winner from here. It's Rodeo Red a length in front of Hastings Mazork. Scarlet Tinker into third place, then Gentle Pagan. Indian Uprising starting to make ground on the outside but the bird may have flown. That's Rodeo Red. He's clear with 100 metres to go. Oh, yes, he's killing them. Rodeo Red three lengths in front of Indian Uprising and Northern Mist and Rodeo Red goes to the post and scores easily. Rodeo Red first, Indian Uprising second, third Northern Mist, then Hasty Missouri. Well, the first four on Qantas Brisbane Handicap Day. We'll take a break now in sports scene and come back and have a look at the rest of the card. Next on State Affair, Australia's most eligible... ...and handicap, which was the fifth event at Eagle Farm yesterday, went to Persian World. The favourite, Lord Penn, disappointing. He uh, raced very fiercely in the middle stages. It wasn't surprising that he tired badly in the straight. But I thought uh, Persian World was particularly well ridden by Ken Russell. Forte ran his usual honest race, and uh, dead heated the second with how to blush. ...and then foreign diplomat and Persian World is joining in quickly. Lord Penn looks as though he's gone. Forte hit the lead. 200 metres to go. Forte in front, but Persian World's a danger on the outside. 
side. Forte and Persian World, they're fighting it out. How the blush is coming from the clouds and then High Gita. Forte and Persian World. Persian World, Forte, they hit the wire. Persian World. Persian World has just won it. Fado second and third. Forte or How to Blush. Then High Gita. Forte uh, narrowly beaten there by Persian World. He's to spell now and uh, be set for some big races next year. We'll show you the slow-mo. There's a couple of runs to highlight in this. How to Blush running on generously in Russ Hins's yellow and green colours and wider out High Gita. Now, a horse not quite in camera range, just coming in now, Insatiate. This was a first-class effort to get fifth. He was uh, well back and wide at the home turn, chopped out for a run when they straightened, and he really got to the line strongly there in a close-up fifth place. I think he's one that uh, should be able to pick up a Brisbane race in the very near future. The sixth event went to the outsider, Wins a Song, who surged home. A couple of disappointments, and this in particular, the favourite, Gallery Man, who's in second place at this stage, but really starting to labour. On them, about two lengths in front. Wins a Song's a bit of a danger on the outside, coming out after Ising, and it's Wins a Song taking the lead from Shock and Ising. Gallery Man struggling, and then Terringer and Clavelli Door making up ground, but Wins a Song kicked away, and Wins a Song's going on to score easily. Wins a Song first by two lengths. Tied second and third, Clavelli Door in a fade ale with Shock, then Terringer Courage. The Shock result, Wins a Song successful at long odds to the cheers of the bookies. The Fraser Handicap, a traditional lead up to the Queensland Cup, went to the Sydney stayer Sasha Bijou. But uh, Lord Hunter lived to shade unlucky. He was heavily backed. He's in red colours just behind the, the leaders at this stage. Sasha Bijou had stole a winning break, and Hunt, Lord Hunterly now into the clear runs on strongly. Sasha Bijou has dashed away at the 250. It's Sasha Bijou two lengths in front of Lord Hunterly. Then Great Mogul muted, string of pearls dropping out of it. Sasha Bijou in front leads by a length. Lord Hunterly trying hard on the outside. Sasha Bijou in front. Lord Hunterly driving it. Sasha Bijou they hit it. And it's close at the end. I'd say Sasha Bijou has just lasted to win it by a half head. I'd say Sasha Bijou has beaten Lord Hunderley. Great Mogul about six lengths away. Well, those two place getters, first two place getters to clash again next week in the Queensland Cup over 3,200 metres. Final event at Eagle Starting Farm went to Miss Egmont. A rails hugging Ray ride by Rod. He slipped the former jumps jockey to knock out the favourite Neffa. For the run in, 300 metres to go and all swept up on the outside joined Lick along. Mr. Edition is next. Uh, last good night's drop ride out of it. Silver Relic and Seaview Girl to the outside and now Neff is hitting top gear. Orr's just in front. It's uh, Miss Egmont's the one. She's got the run on the inside. She's burst through. Neff are coming after Miss Egmont. Miss Egmont hit the front close to home. Yes, she's too good for them. Miss Egmont with a real rails hugging ride has burst through and she's won it. Miss Egmont first. Neff is second. Tight for third. They're right across the track. We've got Silver Relic Seaview Girl. Lickle. Yes, Miss Egmont uh, couldn't have got any closer to the rails without getting on top of the fence. That was the uh, final event from Eagle Farm yesterday. Now the treble and double information from Eagle Farm. 5 and 11 the double, $119.60. 4, 5 and 11 the treble, $1,308 even. And six pick yesterday didn't go off, so that will jackpot to next week. The uh, punter's taking a real drubbing at Eagle Farm. And after this break, we'll have a look at uh, Rose Hill, where they had their only hurdle race for the year yesterday. Channel 7 is first with the latest news. At uh, Rose Hill and the uh, punters were on top early, but I think the bookies wore them down. Nigel Tarley, a winning treble, he's number two rider for the Brian Mayfield uh, Smith stable. But I think it's a bit of a slur on his uh, ability to call him a number two rider. He's an outstanding Kiwi, as most of the imports to come to Australia from New Zealand in recent years have proven. Opening event at uh, Rose Hill yesterday went to Flotilla, who was well tried to start three to one. Flotilla in the yellow colours with the black cap, moving up towards the leaders now. Here's Waliko down the middle of the track, and getting a run through now is the well-fancied Flotilla. At the 200, many possibilities. Waliko wide out, Flotilla and Macquarie Prince within the centre. Flotilla doing by far the better. De Montfort rides hard and the top. He comes away from uh, its rivals, and Flotilla wins it two lengths to Waliko. Darryl David went to Tiley. Uh, on postage due, who's leading on the inside, just inclined to wobble a little bit around the corner, but uh, goes to post generously to defeat, to defeat the favourite Magic Heart. Is Magic Heart and nose postage due, three deep Darrell's Daydream, then Golden Crony, and Miss Show Cozy on the rails. Now at the 300 metres, Tylee hasn't gone for the whip on postage due, it's doing a little better than Magic Heart at the moment, and Carl's got the whip on the second filly, and postage due's come away from Magic Heart, clear of Darrell's Daydream, and postage due, in fact, is careering away on the last 50 and it's a good win. It's posted due scoring snuffed out. Young Charger did just that down the outside at 50 to 1 to defeat Sikorsky and Fitzhugh in the third. By a length second. Third posse is Sir Tipler. Trick gold on the inside and then Lady of Ross and Sikorsky putting in a run. At the 250, Barker pulls the whip on Fitzhugh. Has a glance to the left. Second is
is Sikorsky coming at him solidly now, followed by Trick Gold not getting a lot of room, and old young charger next from Lady of Ross, but Sikorsky moved up to Fitzhugh, put the head in front, Fitzhugh's kicking on, but young charger will blow them all out. Young charger rocketing down the outside, and young charger's won the money. Fourth event went to Addition Bay, but the runner-up Shining Wood lost no admirers for the Queensland Cup next week by battling on very gamely for second. Shining Wood and Addition Bay on the outside. They turn for home. And Jean Dawes about a length and a half. Shining Wood, who ranges up into second place now. Third is Saxon White, and then comes Addition Bay. Now he gets stuck into Shining Wood, and it quickly headed off Jean Dawes, but Addition Bay went past Shining Wood. And at the 200 metres, Addition Bay on the outside leads about a neck on Shining Wood, and in third Third place on the outside, Son of Bijou, but it's Addition Bay in front. Shining Wood on the inside, battles on, but Addition Bay's too strong. It's homeward bound. Luskin's touch and Olympic flame stormed home in the last 100 metres on the outside to uh, fight out the finish of the fifth. The favourite market zip in red colours in third place, disappointing. The others headed by Olympic flame at the 300 metres now, and uh, it's market zip putting his mind on the job, and he's starting to come after without reason. On the inside in the third place, half shilling, and then Luskin's touch, but without reason going all right, it's without reason in front of Market Zip, 50 to go, Luskin's touch on the outside is coming with Olympic Flame, Luskin's touch races to the front, Luskin's touch. Another one for the Mayfield-Smith Tiley combination when Gamble on Me took out the sixth. Gamble on Me took over from the leader at the 200 metres and came away on the last uh, few 50 metres. Fairy wish around the corner and the leader Misty Crony about a length and a half singeing lamb followed then on the inside by Armament then Gamble on Me and Fairy wish into the open now she, he's about six off the rails at the 300 metres and Misty Crony taken on by Gamble on Me. Pretty wide out is Fairy wish still about a length and a half from Misty Crony. Misty Crony now tackled in earnest by Gamble on Me, who's going home better on the outside, and Gamble on Me draws away from Miss Crony. Here they the Sydney punters didn't mind the only hurdle race. They picked the right one. Noblest Roman at six to four wins by a street. And the first of these in the home straight of the 400. Noblest Roman over it beautifully. It's about four or five lengths clear. Second for Layboy, then a loser of Way All Prince, followed by Italian verdict. Here's the last. Noblest Roman. I jumped it beautifully. And has got the two. His national hurdle well in its keeping. The rider Jennings showing at the whip. Noblest Roman's a mile in front. Only interest in the minors. A great go here. Trelay boy and on the outside running on Tirandara. But Noblest Roman. Oh, gee whiz. And behind those... Guys, the uh, eighth event went to an eight-year-old, Nosy Parker, who looked uh, as though he was going to be beaten 50 metres out, but fought on to defeat Signal to Noise. Lucky Rass badly in need of a run from clear picture, and then so torrid at the 300 meters and a monochrome leads the way from nosy parker lucky Ras can't get out and here's signal to noise signal to noise is winding up goes after nosy parker and monochrome nosy parker put the nose in front nosy parker in front from monochrome signal to noise the outside nosy parker just the leader the big blokes home nosy parker from signal to noise there's a victory in the final event to begalia pride win by mark de montfort all the way but nighthaven is ducking right out wide and the extreme outside taken by De Smissel. Begalia Pride at the 300, a length clear on just as lovely, followed by the American, and hit it again is getting clear now. And is starting to come home pretty well. De Montfort pulls the whip on Begalia Pride. It's a length and a half clear, holding them at the moment. Begalia Pride from just as lovely, hit it again. And then the American, but Begalia Pride all the way. Begalia Pride wrapping up a winning double for Mark de Montfort. Now the TAB information on the Rose Hill meeting and two and two the double, $25.60, five two and two the treble, $629. A couple of boil overs, C Swell successful at 10 to 1 in the guineas, but the uh, cup of real bonanza for the bookmakers with Faristan uh, returning to form uh, to um, you know, complete a very good run by Shane Dye in Melbourne this spring. I think he's a, a rider of the future as well. Another ex-Kiwi. Opening event, and there was a good thing licked in this, Ann Boyce, who's midfield in the red colours. He runs on powerfully, just fired by a half head to pick up Disputed Pearl. And it's Surrey Prince now tackled by Disputed Pearl. They've kicked right away from Bivouac. They're followed by Amboise running on fairly from a Pake Flash. Surrey Prince just the leader. Sticking to its task, Disputed Pearl has run upside now and joined it. It's Disputed Pearl the inside going a little bit the better with 100 metres to go. Disputed Pearl drawing away. Amboise coming from the clouds. Disputed Pearl in front as they get near the line. And Disputed Pearl's just won it from Amboise.
The second went to uh, Melbourne Cup winning jockey Michael Clark. Send me an angel who uh, runs on well in the black sleeves and cap to defeat Glowing Idol. Send me an angel, Walhalla girl, burning and glowing idol. In the straight, Pretty Plume about three or four lengths in front still of Cropley Road, eloquent addition. Send me an angel coming down the outside from Walhalla girl and mixed blessing. But Pretty Plume showing no signs of stopping. Three in front, although he's gone for the whip. From Send me an angel, Walhalla girl and glowing idol are running on. Send me an angel getting to Pretty Plume. Then Walhalla girl, the inside. Side, glowing Idol out wide, but Send Me an Angel went to the lead. It's clear of Glowing Idol and Walhalla Girl, and Send Me an Angel wins two and a half lengths to Glowing Idol, Walhalla Girl third. Clark continued the good work by taking out the next on Midnight Fever, very promising Luskin star filly. About seventh and hard ridden from Dart Flight and then Squires Blomley. Oh, some of them have gone right off the track. Twisted Logic led, right aspect has quickly moved up to it. Midnight Fever into third place from New Pearl and Faithful Thought. With 2.50 to go now, right aspect given a touch with the whip, took the lead immediately. Uh, from on the inside, Twisted Logic, but Midnight Fever's coming at it quickly. Midnight Fever out after right aspect, grabbed it in a few strides. And Midnight Fever's coming right away in the run home. Wins by more than the length to right aspect, Twisted Logic third. Down old stager Glenn Morriston the showed there's life in the old boy yet at seven year old. He ran on strongly to take out the welter at 20 to 1. Then on the inside, rear flyer followed further back in the field by Woking Bin Binga. And then to the outside, Live Albert and Glenn Morriston. 300 out, specially just the leader from Romantic Red. Royal work out after them. Rare Flyers running on well. Then Woking getting through and Glenn Morriston. The outside's grabbing the lot of them. Glenn Morriston swept to the lead now with 200 to go. Out wide, Red Opaque starting to run on and then Puckle Harbour. But Glenn Morriston in front with 100 metres to go, holding them safely. Glenn Morriston goes on to score. Rare Flyer second, Royal work third. Then came the Cup and it was Faristan and Periscope making their runs together in the straight. You'll notice them out uh, in the centre of the track. Faristan under hands and heels riding is just a shade too strong for Periscope. Tradition the inside, Astaman three deep, two to alternate. Then Cativo taken off the rails from Mint Master, two lengths further back, run for cover, hard ridden. Then came Pacific Air, Peckham Aguess and last Lord Julian. 8.50 to go, about to come down the hill. Lance Lotto about two lengths clear of Waratah Bay now closing the gap. Cuba's goal third, a link to Rising Fear, niggle at from Faristan. Periscope off the rails next from Reckless Tradition and Empire Rose taken wide. Alternate Cativo is under the whip. They're followed further back in the field then by Mint Master and run for cover. On the turn, 4.50 out, Lance Lotto joined on the outside by Waratah Bay. Rising Fear comes at them from Cuba's goal. Periscope looking for a run from Faristan. Empire Rose out wide from Cativo. Rising Fear got to the lead at the 300 metre mark from Lance Lotto, Faristan. Periscope's got out coming at them from Empire Rose and run for cover. It's Periscope, Faristan and Empire Rose now have raced past Rising Fear. Then Cartivo. It's Faristan ahead in front of Periscope. Periscope fighting back but Faristan in front near the line and Faristan's won it. A neck to Periscope. Third placing to run for cover. Next Tim Cassidy beaten there on Periscope but bounced back to take out the Guineas on C Swell who defeated Military Plume narrowly. The favourite Cavalry in second spot at this stage pulled hard and tied in the straight. Cavalry won El Vaquero. Military Plumes travelled pretty well next from Highly Regal then C Swell. Uh, King of Brooklyn under great pressure from Warren. Cavalry went up on the outside as they straightened and took the lead on straightening from Command Code. Military Plume is coming at him very comfortably on the outside from Seaswell. I think Cavalry's gone. Military Plume's grabbed him. Seaswell coming at them from King of Brooklyn. And with 2.50 to go, Military Plume and Seaswell have beaten off Cavalry from King of Brooklyn. It's Military Plume ahead in front. Seaswell getting to him. Seaswell draws level as they get near the line. Stride for stride to the post and Seaswell's won it. New Atlantis landed some good bets in taking out the seventh event. He's racing in second spot in blinkers for the first time and really went on with the job. The outside, good old days, Ollie's decree, bullion broker and then baptised in our Avon's gold. With 300 to go and New Atlantis coasted up to Bogachi. Sapphire Lad starting to run on and further back is baptised. New Atlantis took the lead, drew a length in front, holding them at bay. Sapphire Lad and now baptised coming home well. But New Atlantis sneaked away and he's got it won. New Atlantis goes down to the line to win a little over length to Sapphire Lad. Baptises third. Well, veteran rider Bob Skelton successful in the final event on Imperial Regina, who's in black colours and pretty deep at the home turn. Stylishly. Then Fairy One getting out on his elusive gambler and Imperial Regina down the outside. 
Cumtel went to the lead, 300 to go. Norgwen Fleur battling on. Imperial Regina on the outside. Bobby Skelton riding for dear life, trying to get to Cumtel. Cumtel in front of the 200 a length. Skelton riding hard on Imperial Regina is gradually reducing the gap. Cumtel won't give in on the inside. Imperial Regina's getting to it. They're almost locked together. And Bobby Boy's won it, I think, on Imperial Regina. And Bill Collins might have been on Bobby Boy. Now the TAV information for Sandown yesterday. Three and one, the double, $121.55. Three and one, the treble, $3,397.40. Good luck if you got that, you earned it. And the extra double from Sandown, four and six, paid $176.40. In racing this week... Wood was unlucky. He finished second. Uh, I've looked at the replay a few times. I don't think he would have won by a big space if he'd managed to get uh, clear a little earlier. But he certainly, uh, I think, would have outstayed in top swing if they'd gone to the lead together halfway down the straight. Opening event at Eagle Farm yesterday went to Ken Russell on Poetic Sound. Very speedy filly. She was getting a bit weary at the finish, but she held off Autumn Smoke by a head. They got very wide from Gymnast Grand Slam. Monarca Star second last and Nether Hill at the tail when they turned the bend. Poetic Sound led into the straight 350 metres out. Sam Winnett goes to second. Autumn Smoke out wide and then written report followed by Blazing James. Poetic Sound led at the 200. Russell pulled the whip. The filly slipped nicely clear. She's two in front. Sam Winnett second. Autumn Smoke running on now. Poetic Sound getting tired. Autumn Smoke cutting it down. Here's the post. Poetic Sound just in front and wins. Poetic Sound beat Autumn Smoke. Sam Winnett third. The day when there were some very exciting finishes, uh, the second event provided one of the closest. Ballon Girl on the inside looked to have scored, but it was Stars and Riches out wide getting the prize. Whiskey Coin a close up third, and the favourite Gothorpe also close in fourth place. Two lengths to Ballon Girl, then Golden Reflection, and Gothorpe and Ernie's Choice midfield as they turn. Whiskey Coin went to the lead at the 350 with Diamond Bay, the challenger, on the outside. My Maxine on the fence, and then Ballon Girl coming home fairly from Gothorpe and Stars and Riches out wide. Whiskey Coin led at the 150. Diamond Bay trying to get on terms. Ballon Girl and Stars and Riches after them. Whiskey Coin in front. Ballon Girl grab Whiskey Coin. Stars and Riches on the outside. But I think Ballon Girl. I think Ballon Girl's won from Stars and Riches. Third event went to the very consistent Mr. Match. He was aided by a great rails run halfway up the straight. And he just held off the fast finishing River Road, who's last at this stage, going towards the outside. He storms home to just far. Princess Stephanie leads into the straight. 450 metres out by a length to Princess Bay. Mr. Match looking for a run on the rail, then bit of a lark and face the stars. Our Dana out wide and Gypsy Joe starting to wind up. Mr. Match got the split at the 200, went to the lead from Princess Tiffany, then Princess Vay, bit of a lark. Now face the stars into the clear. Gypsy Joe out wide and River Road. Mr. Match in front, River Road flying on the outside. They split the line. Another photo. In again, Mr. Match maybe from River Road, but it's close. Then bit of a lark. You'll see in the slow motion, we'll show you now, David Murphy uh, on the inside on Mr. Match. He was supremely confident. He went to the lead here under a big hold, and he's under instructions not to go too soon. You can see him sitting quietly. There's four or five runners on his outside, uh, all close up, but young Murphy just starting to slap at Mr. Match now. Now the horse on right on the outside in the green colours is River Road. One in from him is Gypsy Joe, who ran a good race first up. Uh, in from Gypsy Joe is Bit of a Lark, who had no luck, and Princess Vay in the gold and black colours face the stars in the orange cap. But it's Mr. Match on the inside. Now Murphy starts to show him the whip. As you can see the post looming up, Mr. Match getting a little bit tired. As Bit of a Lark, one out and right out wide in the green and yellow colours. It's River Road really surging home. You can see River Road's tongue sticking out there. He uh, got his tongue over the bit, and that probably made the difference because he went under by only uh, a half head. But a lovely, cool ride by uh, David Murphy on Mr. Match, and uh, thoroughly deserved that victory. A great performance there from the youngster. Fourth event was the Diet Coke Novice and the first of a winning treble to Shane Scriven. You'll notice at the home turn, most of the field spreads very deep. Now quite uh, Scriven on the inside in purple and black colours saves a mountain of ground there. Now he chases through and comes one off the fence to take over the lead coming towards the 200. Amingo deeper out, then lower power. Noble impact and over the blues out deep. Clayt hit the front at the 200 metres pole. Noble impact running on. Then Indian uprising and over the blues but Clayt nicely clear. 100 metres is out, led by two and a half over the Blues, runs to second, clear of Noble Impact, but Clayt's a big winner at the post, Clayt wins by four Clayt has beaten over the Blues Noble Impact runs third
Kite by a big space there in the fourth event. We'll take a break now in sports scene and come back and have a look at the Coca-Cola Queensland Cup. Queensland Cup, which was the fifth event at Eagle Farm yesterday, in top swing, the grey from North Queensland, successful at 66 to 1. And I can't remember a feature race in Australia where the Quinella was provided by two lady trainers. In top swing, defeating Shining Wood, who's midfield in red colours on the inside of in top swing as we pick them up along the back straight. Sasha Bajou, the grey, finished third, and he's always in a handy position. He's running fifth at this stage. You know, Bingo second, last and Mr. Edition ahead away at the rear. Bold Endeavours come back to them at the 1300. Uh, upkeep sweeps up into second spot, only a half length away. T Biscuit third. Gerald Road fourth on the fence, a length to Sasha Bijou, then Secret Bay. Sikorsky off the rail, followed by Miss Liddy and Rangong's Pride. Then Shining Wood held up on the fence as in top swing works around the outside. A length away is Fiedler, then Neffer. Bucking Rip going through in the centre from Barossus. Great Muggle, Panama Jack well back. So is Saxon White, Jawer and New Year. You know Bingo second last and Mr. Edition whipped them in at the 800 metres peg. Bold Endeavour getting his second wind again leads by a length and a half to upkeep who's under the whip. Two and a half to Tea Biscuit, then Sasha Bijou. Miss Lily out wide, Sikorsky starting a run. Gerald Road under pressure, then in top swing, followed by Panama Jack, Rangong's Pride Fiedler. Secret Bay, Bucking Rip, Jawer, and where's Shining Wood? He's been pushed back to near the tail of the field as they flatten out. 400 to go. Who can say? 3,200 metres. Bold Endeavours under the whip. Sasha Bijou runs up into second spot. In top swing, deeper out. Then up keeping Tea Biscuit with Panama Jack and Shining Woods in the clear. Bold Endeavour led at the 100. Sasha Bijou and in top swing grab it. Out wide, Shining Wood. In top swing took the lead in the cup. Shining Wood running on, but it's too late. In top swing in front and wins the Queensland Cup. In top swing beats Shining Wood. Sasha Bijou third. Well, a triumph there for Doug Messingham on the outsider in top swing. No joy for Shane Scriven, who rode beautifully early in the race on Shining Wood, and then luck deserted him from the 700 metres where he was looking to improve. And while in top swing was scooting uh, up towards the lead as he was stuck back in the ruck. Now, at this stage, it's uh, Bold Endeavour in front. The, the light grey is Sasha Bijou, the dark grey on the outside in top swing with Messingham hands and heels. This is a very good ride by Messingham and it's Scriven now really getting to work on Shining Wood but the bird had flown, it was in top swing clear. Shining Wood you'll notice he's a horse who can't really accelerate but he's a very very strong stayer and he's going to the post generously at the end of the 3200 metres. I think next year he's going to be a big race winner for sure. But uh, in top swing, uh, successful and I'm sure there'll be wild celebrations in Ingham still raging. He's trained up there by Julia Simmons and congratulations to that uh, North Queensland trainer. Sixth event was the Welter Handicap, and Shane Scriven was quickly back into the winning list to make up for his uh, defeat on Shining Wood. He's successful here on El Jadady, who's joint leader on the inside as they straighten. My Blue Kingdom makes a late run to just fail. Sunshine Valley, then Foreign Yacht Vigo, and My Blue Kingdom well back as they turn. El Jadady and Sheer Four still going hammer and tongue at the 350. Canada two lengths away. My Blue Kingdom runs to fourth, and New Bliss is out wide. El Jadady at the 200 drop sheer force who's flat then Canada, My Blue Kingdom and New Bliss running on. Al Jadady tired, My Blue Kingdom cutting him down with every stride. Al Jadady still in front, My Blue Kingdom lunged at him and I think missed him. I think El Shadady's won from My Blue Kingdom. New Bliss has run third. And well, that was win number two for the day for Shane Scriven. He wrapped up a treble with a contrasting ride here on Roman Draftsman. It was all the way on El Jadady. Roman Draftsman, superbly ridden by Scriven, settled midfield. He's in pink colours with a black cap. You'll notice him slice through in the centre in the straight. He's too strong for the favourite, Melody Moss. Four in front of Terringer. Burley Bay on the outside. Melody Moss taken out to the centre. Then Gold, Jade and Stars are easy. Nickel Silver slipped away from Rodeo Red at the 200 and 50, the boy riding hands and heels. Melody Moss runs into second spot. Then Roman Draftsman. Nickel Silver getting tired. Melody Moss coming after it. Vice versa out wide. Roman Draftsman in the centre. He's the one. Roman Draftsman's taken the lead from Melody Moss and vice versa. And Roman Draftsman wins. Roman Draftsman has beaten Melody Moss. Vice versa third. Ken Russell beaten there on the favourite Melody Moss. And a lot of Russell followers threw in on his mount in the final event, Wandering Duke. He was disappointing finishing fourth. The race went to Clavelli Dior, a lucky last minute ride for Peter Losh after Mel Shoemaker failed to make the weight. Clavelli Dior switching round the heels of four or five runners, and actually the widest runner there in the yellow colours. Little Troy and Principium and Lady Reason well back as they turn the bend. Gimmick led into the straight at the 350. Tackled by Granite, Wandering Duke and Clavelli Dior on the outside. At the 200, Clavelli Dior's reached the lead. Wandering Duke under pressure. Granite fighting on 
and Silver Magnum. Clavelli Dior in front. Silver Magnum the danger. Clavelli Dior a half in front. Silver Magnum won't reach Clavelli Dior. Clavelli Dior has beaten Silver Magnum. Granite third. Then... Peter Losch uh, making every post a winner there in the final event on Clavelli Dior. Now the TAB information on the Eagle Farm meeting. 13 and 14 the double. Good dividend. $1,192.20. 613 and 14. $7,346.50. And six pick, not surprisingly, jackpots. No one putting in, in top swing, I don't think. 6, 6, 13, 3, 14 and 7 was that combination. And Division 2, a healthy $965.65. We'll take it from yesterday. You'll note as the meeting progresses that most of the riders were searching wide looking for firmer ground. The uh, track was officially rated as dead, but it was quite obvious that the wide runners had a distinct advantage and a lot of the winners came down the centre of the track or even deeper out. First event at Warwick Farm went to Scandare by Yates and interestingly first winner at Eagle Farm. Poetic sound also by that side. Scandare's in uh, pink colours, three out, under pressure at this stage but responds generously. Adeline further back, sensation inside the 200, almost four in line. Take note, Elder Time, Scandare and Star Gem is still kicking on the outside. It's Star Gem and Scandia stride for stride. Scandia just in front. The earlier effort telling on Star Gem and Scandia for the money. Jim Cassidy worked out the track pretty quickly. You can see him scouting very wide in the white sleeves and the red cap on Francette. And the uh, Philly Storms home down the outside to score easily from the leader, Lady Mantis. Pretty well. Lady Mantis at the 200, still a length and a half on Francette, starting to veer in again, but she's closing the gap. Francette raced into about two off the rails, but quickly put paid to Lady Mantis, then Gay Jewel. And Francette will win pretty comfortably on the line, two lengths, in fact. This is an outstanding first up performance by Kappa in the third race. I think this is one to keep an eye on. He's one from the outside under the whip at this stage. He's very green. He'd missed the start, but he goes to the post very strongly. Coming after Den Sarko very quickly, and then Glenbourne, but Kappa. Kappa dashes to the lead in second place. Glenbourne, Kappa veered out, but is too good. Kappa, a newcomer, has beaten Glenbourne Den Fourth event went to Kappa's stablemate Prince Fair, who uh, is the baldy face horse in the blue colours, right on the outside. And he goes on to the score by a long neck from Mohegan, ridden by Mick Dittman. And scheduled pluses next at the 200. And Prince Fair out in the centre of the track has raced to the lead here. Schwartz second, Lady Jordana running home from Big Valdo and Mohegan. But it's Prince Fair in front. And in fact, Prince Fair's too good. Another one for Kevin Moses. The fifth event went to the nine-year-old Hussars Command, who races well on the Warwick Farm track. He's in purple cap, running about centre field at this stage. He really gets a motor on from here. He bursts through in the centre. The middle from clear picture. Glomunda's in front. Latest word struggling. Old Hussars Command. Old Hussars Command. Old enough to vote. Oh, Hussars Command. Nine years of age. Gobbles them up and is racing away. Hussars Command and Rodney Hardwick salute two and a half lengths. It was the well-tried Ara King all the way in the sixth event. Ara King, the, the horse in the breastplate, just moving away from the fence at this stage. He's under the whip, but responds very strongly. Not going on with it, and then Peaceful Kingdom. Ara King's rider pulls the whip. 150 to go. It's a length on Peaceful Kingdom, followed by Kuala Bay. But it's Ara King in front. Peaceful Kingdom on the outside, still a half length away. And Ara King's going to lead all the way. And the oldest apprentice riding in Sydney, Les Jones, has booted Ara King. Mick Dittman ridden a plum shore, landed some good bets, and he led all the way in the seventh event really kicks at this stage as Dittman hurries for home to defeat Winarvi. And Plumshaw in front, more than a length on Winarvi, battling on well. And third is Barlu, but it's Plumshaw in front with 100 metres left to go. Winarvi's a length and a half second, but Plumshaw is safely holding Winarvi and Barlu. And Plumshaw leads all the way to win it. Plumshaw a length and three... Prince Arthur from Newcastle came storming down the outside at 7-1 to, to defeat the well-tried French Legion in the final event. Legion coming down the outside and Prince Arthur with a well-timed run. Little Robinson pulls the whip on Investor but Prince Arthur's going home like a rocket out in the middle and Prince Arthur is roaring away now from French Legion and Investor and Prince Arthur wins it pulling up two and a half lengths. Second home French Prince Legion. Arthur in uh, pretty in impressively in the final event there, relishing the soft conditions. Now the TAV information, 7 and 6, the double from Warwick Farm, $170.30. 8, 7 and 6, the treble, $1,627.60. And the extra double from Warwick Farm, 2 and 1, paid $32.60. We'll take a break, come back and have a look at a very new yesterday in Melbourne. And as you'll note, as we go through these races, very, very dusty. They're having problems with their tracks down there. And uh, I think uh, very strange for Melbourne. They wouldn't mind a bit of rain at the moment. Opening event.
event. Uh, very impressive victory to Legend Bearer, who's part owned by Jack Klugman of uh, Quincy fame. Legend Bearer clear at this stage and goes on right on with the job. Well back on the field in Suma Tome, 350 out. And Legend Bearer went up on the inside to go to the front, being tackled by Bull Seymour down the outside. At the 200 metre mark, Legend Bearer shot away though. Race three lengths in front. Purple Matador, Bull Seymour trying hard from Barb and Cedar, but it's Hayes and Clark first up in this opening race. And Legend Bearer, an easy winner, wins three or four lengths, Purple Matador. Third up. Well, that combination of Colin Hayes and Michael Clark was thwarted in the second event when Captivan defeated the favourite Godessa. And it's Captivan by two lengths. Godessa is under pressure. Captivan's got away two or three in front of Godessa. They're clear of Art Lady and Lazip. But at the 200 metre mark, Captivan a length in front. Godessa trying hard on the outside, but Captivan for Gauchy a length in front. Clark pulling the whip on Godessa. Gauchy and Clark in a great battle. Captivan a neck in front. Godessa pegging it back. Captivan hanging on. She'll get there. Captivan the top way to hit on the line. Two the veteran jockey Bobby Skelton scored again on Imperial Regina who came from last in black colour, still last as they straighten Imperial Regina ran on very powerfully to defeat Tram Car. Rump along under a lot of pressure and not doing a great deal. Then Imperial Regina Bowley's girl, the leader is out Dizzy Heights from Tram Car. Rump along on the outside gradually winding up with a Y and blue and here's Imperial Regina from last. Imperial Regina with a mighty run has swamped them. Oh, what a run this. Imperial Regina racing away from Tramcar. And our Dizzy Heights and from last to first is Imperial Regina. It was long odds on, bit of a star all the way down the straight, but Maui Breeze stormed home to pick up bit of a star in the last two hops. This followed by Maui Breeze and Vesterberg. Bit of a star in front of the 200 metre mark. Trying hard on the outside is at the moment uh, battling on Lady Belfast. Maui Breeze coming to finish quickly and Savali on the rail. Maui Breeze goes up to bit of a star from Savali and then further back in the field, Norgun missed. It's bit of a star in front, Maui Breeze pegging it back. Bit of a star, Maui Breeze, bit of a star, Maui Breeze, Maui Breeze and O's, I reckon. Fifth event was the Eclipse Stakes. It went to so vague in controversial circumstances from Puckle Harbour. Glenn Morriston pulled out wide. So vague gets the split in the centre now and quickly races up to tackle them. Reputed wider out but running down to the 200 metre mark. Glenn Morriston on the outside and so vague draw clear. Then Puckle Harbour at the 150 and so vague on the inside and Glenn Morriston. Here's Ferristan down the outside. Clark riding for dear life on so vague from Glenn Morriston. Ferristan flashing down the outside with Puckle Harbour. So vague in front near the line and so vague has won the eclipse. So vague repeating his eclipse stakes a victory of last year to give uh, Michael Clark yet another victory. I'll we'll show you the slow mo now. There are dual protests in this. Harry White, who rode the runner up Faristan, uh, Puckle Harbour, sorry, protested uh, against the winner. Now, the interference was allegedly in the final 100 metres. It's hard to see from this angle how there was any interference. It's so vague in front. Puckle Harbour won out. Uh, the third horse out is Glenn Morriston and Faristan down the outside. Those latter two dead heated for third. It's Puckle Harbour slicing through in the centre, but not uh, quickly enough because it was so vague first half. Home. So vague uh, withstanding that protest and uh, Michael Clark really in superb form at the moment. It's marvellous what a bit of confidence will do for a jockey. Twelve months ago he was regarded as being a second rater. Now he's got the uh, Melbourne Cup uh, under his belt and several other wins for the Colin Hay Stable and he's certainly one of the form jockeys in Australia. Sixth event was the Churnside Stakes and uh, the favourite Wild Rampage. Look a little unlucky. Clark had no luck here. He's third on the inside. You can see him angling for a run but the grey Bell Spirit goes up and chops him out. Keel. Bell Spirit's now put Wild Rampage back into a pocket of the 200 metre mark. Bell Spirit, Broadway, Lil getting to Blazing Keel. Now Wild Rampage gets out, but I think it's going to be too late. It's Bell Spirit getting to the front with 100 to go. Wild Rampage finishing down the outside from Broadway, Lil, but the little grey is going to be too good today, Bell Spirit. She sprints away and gets the money on the post by two lengths. Which was Archer victory all the way in the seventh. Kicks right away as they straighten, always in command to score by two and a half lengths. Pulled out wide and then Shaw and Free Sculpt us pride after hours. Archer victory bolted away at the 300 metre mark. They led three or four lengths. Roman Laurel getting out and running home well from Tamar Moon. Then cheers for us and the other struggling from Parsifal. Archer victory in front of the 200 metre mark. Roman Laurel, Tamar Moon are trying hard. But Archer victory's got a big break over Roman Laurel. Tamar Moon, Parsifal late down the outside. But Archer victory's pinched that winning break. And Archer victory wins the money by two lengths in the run home. Second placing to run...
was Clark and Gauchi again at the finish of the final event. And watch this finish over the final 200 metres, a classic confrontation between these two good jockeys, Clark just prevailing on Eastern Classic over Gourmet Prince. And a shot, Gourmet Prince further out. Then Keepers and they've raced away from Trictham and further back to Lapia. On the outside, Gourmet Prince and Eastern Classic at the 200 metre mark. Draw away to fight it out from Keepers. It's Gourmet Prince, the outside Eastern Classic, fighting back on the rail. Nothing between them from Keepers, Gourmet Prince and Eastern Classic, stride for stride. From Keepers, Gourmet Prince, Eastern Classic. Eastern Classic kicking on the inside and he's won the last event. Eastern Classic has kicked again to win a half head on the line to Gourmet Prince. What a clash that was, uh, Michael Clark, just uh, getting the decision there on Eastern Classic. And Darren Gauchy certainly not disgraced on, in second place. Now the TAV information on Sandown, two and three, the double, $48.90. Seven, two and three, the treble, $432.20. And the extra double on Sandown was seven and two paid for. In a matter of moments to describe the running of the Japan Cup of this year, introduce you to Keith Hogg. Well, only six horses to go into the stalls. Philip behind the stalls, Jupiter Island, Gallup Diner and also... Sakura Yutaka about to go in as Miho Shinzan and there goes the possible front runner Koshiro King ridden by Ko Kabi. He won the race last year and it has been suggested that he may take the lead in the race. The Japanese have been very very quiet about who's going to be the pacemaker but in the last past three years they've had tear away pacemakers but it'll be very interesting to see today just who does take that lead. Sakura Yutaka about to go into the stalls and that's the last horse to line in the 86 Japan Cup. Waverly Star beautifully behaved, has drawn barrier nine and stands up well. The field is set to go. Suda Hawk, the inside gate, flying pigeon from two, and they're racing in the Japan Cup. And out quickly from the inside, flying pigeon, but he's being steadied as Miho Shinzan goes. And I'm right here going the leaders, so uh, Kashiro King, as he races down towards the judge the first time. Waverly Star has settled back in behind these as they go to the judge, and it's Kashiro King, and he's going to lead leisurely. About two lengths now from Miho Shinzan. Hello, my lord, work up from them, Jusabaro. About a length and a half off the fence is Trip Titch, and very wide there is Sakura Yutaka. Back on the inside, Suda Hawk, then followed Waverly Star, settled three out and about fourth last. Alongside of it, Flying Pigeon and Tommy Way squeezed on the inside. Rugby ball bounded round on the outside, then from Gallup Diner. They were followed out by Jupiter Island at last of all the Canadian Caratine. About 15 lengths first to last and racing round to lead them now as they get by about the 1800 metres. And still leading Kashiro King about a length and a half on LA Malord. Five lengths behind these then is Miho Shinzan on its outside. Jusabaro about three back then on the inside. Triptych then followed Sakura Taka. Then followed about a length and a half behind these. Rugby ball on the inside of Gallup Diner. Waverly Stars about 15 to 20 lengths off the leaders. They followed the grey Suda Hawk. Then well back in the field Jupiter Island with Tommy Way. And last of all is Caratine. They race over by the 1200, a big rise at this point of the track, and the pacemaker is now L.A. Malord just on the tail now of uh, Kashiro King. Kashiro King by that length, five lengths away then is Miho Shinzan. Jusabaro comes next, a length and a half, Triptych is settled on the inside then of Gallup Diner. There's Sakura Taki are going round wide on the track, going with it, Flying Pigeon. Then followed a length back, Waverly Star, he's about 10 off the leaders now, then followed a length to Tommy Way, and drifting out last is Suda Hawk, they race now 800 metres to go, and the leader is still Kashiro King from LA Malord. Right on the hammer now on the inside is Miho Shinzan, and coming into it very quickly on the outside, Sakura Yutaka as they come towards the turn, they bunch up only about eight lengths first to last. Around the turn, 550 metres to go now, and Kashira King tackled by L.A. Malord. Starkey making his move. Uh, right in behind the Waverly Star out wider on the track. Here comes Jusabaro at the 350 metre mark, and now leader is Kashiro King, L.A. Malord. On the outside, Jupiter Island putting in a decent run, and here comes Waverly Star, three off them. At the 250 metre mark, L.A. Malord, Jupiter Island, other two leaders coming after the Waverly Star. Late with Sakura Yutaka, but it's Jupiter Island, L.A. Malord. The two English horses down to a Jupiter Island just in front of L.A. Malord. L.A. Malord coming back for Jupiter Island. Sweet and L.A. Malord. Two. Third of the line was Miho Shinzan. They were followed by Waverly Star alongside of it. Rugby ball. Jusabara was the next horse home, then followed Caratine. Next behind them as they went across was Triptych. Didn't fire in the final part of it. Tommy way alongside of it with Gallup Diner and last at the post was Suda Hawk. What a go. Well, there it is. The Japan Cup for 1986 with Jupiter Island getting up on the outside just in the nick of time. Waverly Star beaten out of a place, but certainly, well, he ran the 2,400 metres better than some of them that took part in this year's uh, great race from Japan. We'll be back with more in just a moment.
and a considerable uh, expense to the management and a great effort by the producer John Ormsby. We're able to bring you a couple of the feature races from Perth yesterday. First up, we've got the uh, Rothwell Stakes, which went to Military Plume. The favourite, Fair Sir, actually hit the front in the straight. He's on the outside, gets the better of Military Plume as they straighten, but Clark gets something extra. Went up on the outside to take the leader. Military Plume battling back, followed by Zemindar. San Edwin's tried boxing on. It's Fair Sir and Military Plume going together. A ding dong go. Military Plume kicked back on the inside. Military Plume, great ride by Clark. Military Plume's won it from Fair Sir. About six lengths to a gypsy frolic. San Edwin's. Well, no joy there for uh, trainer Buster O'Malley with Fair Sir finishing in second place. He was looking for some compensation with concrete in the winter bottom stakes. A weight for age sprint over 1400 metres, but again had to uh, be content with second placing with concrete. The rates went to Fimiston, who made it four on the trot. Campaign King and Jungle Dord on the rails to Heronbridge from Concrete Matobi Ruler. Colpack held up, followed by Fimiston and drawn into the straight. Western Pogo led from Jungle Dawn, powering home. Here comes Concrete Campaign King has gone and Fimiston putting in his charge. Western Pogo, Jungle Dawn, Concrete and Fimiston. Fimiston is going home far too good for them. Fimiston is going home too good. He's won by a length over Concrete and Jungle Dawn and knows away third Western Pogo. Followed in by... The racing action uh, centering uh, in Perth at the moment and some very big races coming up over there. We hope that uh, Buster O'Malley can get a little bit better luck than he enjoyed yesterday. The Doombin meeting yesterday unfortunately was marred a little by uh, rain and it uh, turned the track into, uh, uh, well, at least slow halfway through the meeting and uh, legitimate excuses could be offered for uh, several of the beaten runners, in particular the two disappointing efforts uh, in the flying handicap from Tolai and Alamanda Boy. I think you should just do, overlook their unplaced runs yesterday. The opening event uh, at Durban went to Crown Hope, just defeating another magic million prospect in Roses for Us. They're about four lengths in front of Head for Glory. Straightening up, 350 metres to go. Roses for Us joined now by Crown Hope. They're locked together, these two fillies, as they head for the judge. Super Amber's about two lengths away in third spot, and then Head for Glory. Crown Hope's taken the lead, 200 metres to go. Crown Hope shoots away almost a length in front of Roses for Us. He's gone for the whip on Roses for Us and it's Crown Hope about a half length in front of Roses for Us who's fighting on Head for Glory's rattling home at the end Crown Hope in front and she's won it Crown Hope first Crown Hope has beaten Roses for Us or Head for Glory who motored to the line Super Not Amber much doubt the one to follow from that event was Head for Glory I think he's going to be suited when the races get over a little bit more distance the second event went to Proud Interest who deserved this victory she's been racing consistently defeating uh, Gallery King who was gallant in defeat Manuta starting to make ground. Gallery King swept to the lead. 200 metres to go. Proud Interest out of the pack and after the leader and going a bit better than the favourite two. Proud Interest moved up on the outside of Gallery King. Races straight past him and Proud Interest is racing away to score easily. Proud Interest first. Gallery King second. Manuta may have got third just in front of Condaring. Third event was the Marta 75th anniversary graduation. A good training performance by Bill Calder to produce Dancing Poet in great condition. And uh, the chestnut really went on with the job yesterday. This is a good performance. He's moving up to take over at the, about the 250 metre mark. Oh, the favourites, the first beaten Corinda Park and Dancing Poet swept past Shock to go to the lead. It's Dancing Poet about a neck in front of Shock, weakening out of it Corinda Park. Ising and Belmont Air both making ground, but Dancing Poet shoots away close to the line. And Dancing Poet goes on and scores easily. Dancing Poet first, shock second, Ising third, then Belmont Aram. Ballon, the three-year-old Hasty Mazork, raced a little erratically at his previous Brisbane run, but yesterday with the strength and experience of Mike Pelling, he raced very truly to take out the novice handicap. He runs on very strongly to defeat Zany Zephyr. Petruccio tackled quickly by Zany Zephyr, who raced to the front. Now Pioneer Valley and Hasty Mazork after Zany Zephyr. Hasty Mazork coming at Zany Zephyr. Hasty Mazork loomed up. Pelling went for the whip. He's got his nose in front. Hasty Mazork about a head in front of Zany Zephyr, then Pioneer Valley. And Hasty Mazork is moving clear close to the line he wins it by a length hasty mazork first zany zephyr second third pioneer valley offensive Doug messingham second there on zany zephyr after this break. main event the flying handicap and a first class performance by port in and doug messingham to score here but keep an eye on the place getters les's choice good effort first up and look at mendham lad he's last and a mile away at this stage and he gets third on the extreme outside with alamander boy but port in looks to have a winning break at the 200 meter mark he's about two and a half lengths in front les's choice is the only one with any chance of beating port in port in still a couple of lengths in front of les's choice mendham lad making up many lengths on the outside but port in's too good in the run of the line and port in beat les's choice 
Mendham lad third, Alamander boy. One stage Mendham lad was so far back he was almost in the next race. He got third placing, three and a half lengths from the winner in a very, very good effort. Well, Ken Russell had been out of luck earlier in the day, but uh, he came out in the sixth event and on ring wobbler Melody Moss was able to knock out the favourite Princess Gracious. Princess Gracious, she's darted through. She's hit the lead, Princess Gracious. 200 metres to go. Princess Gracious kicked away, a length and a half in front. Melody Moss is going to be the danger coming after Princess Gracious. Princess Gracious just in front of Melody Moss. Melody Moss is coming out of hard. Melody Moss grabbed the lead right on the line. Yes, she's beaten Princess Gracious. Melody Moss by a head. Melody Moss has beaten Princess Gracious, third stealthy night. Melody Moss turned out in some uh, superb condition by Kay Tinsley and the Gold Coast trainer wrapped up a winning double when he took out the seventh event with Dare to be Grand, cleverly ridden by Glenn Killen. Dare to be Grand shot clear before the turn and was able to comfortably hold off Leon Uris and insatiate who runs on. On the outside making ground, Persian World's gone, Bo Zephyr making ground and then Mona Star. It's Dare to be Grand nicely clear, Leon Uris into second place but Dare to be Grand's pinched that break on the bend and he's going to win it. Dare to be Grand a couple of lengths in front of Leon Uris, insatiate and Bo Zephyr both making ground but dare to be grand's too good dare to be grand firstly and nurse second tight third insatiate all bow zephyr well as the uh, drizzle continued the uh, track deteriorated and bay bow and doug messingham came out of the doom and gloom to take out the final event from the very speedy bonnie wanderer who might be one to follow in this this class bay bow going for a run in between horses bonnie wanderer's kicked away again they've got 250 meters to go bonnie wanderer clear about a length and a half in front of rook ennis handsome palace struggling bay bow trying to work into the clear Bonnie Wanderer in front. Baybo's coming after him pretty quickly at the end. He's stopping Bonnie Wanderer. Baybo's going to get him. Baybo loomed up, grabbed the lead, and moves away right at the end to score clearly. Baybo first, second in the race was Bonnie Wanderer. Well, a double to Doug Messingham. He's really riding with great uh, flair and confidence at the moment. Now the TAB information from Doombin. Four and three, the double, $103.10. Four, four and three, the treble, $938.10. And six pick yesterday, jackpotting. No one getting the combination there of four, seven, four, two, three and nine. Division two, $355.35. We'll take a break now in sports scene and come back and have a look at the action from Rose Hill in Sydney. He's passed the post on two, in two races. He kept the race with the uh, fourth event on Barrow. Lass, but Tavari's ace, who was uh, first over the line in the sixth event, lost on protest to Piccata, ironically uh, trained by Tommy Smith, for whom uh, Ditton is the number one jockey. Well, the opening event yesterday at uh, Rose Hill went to Flotilla, who was very heavily backed to start the favourite at six to four in a day of plenty of well-backed winners. Leroy on the outside, followed in the centre by Lord Foxing, Exile Sun on the rails and very wide Lord Kensington and Macquarie Prince is the deepest. They straighten up and Whiskey Supreme doing a shade better than Red Roxy at the moment. Flotilla starting to join Join in now, and the Monarch on the inside and two lengths away next is Lord Foxing. 200 metres out and Flotilla is pegging back Whiskey Supreme very quickly to race to the lead. And Flotilla in front now on the outside. Mnemonic taking about four off the rail to try and pick up Flotilla. A low finishing quickly. The post will be too close and Flotilla wins nicely. Second event, and it was all the way to the outsider, Steel Bullet, who comfortably held off Jim Cassidy's mount, going concern. Vorsky, and last of all is Copper Phantom on the turn, and the leader is Steel Bullet, about a length on Ithaca Star and Talon, Singing Lamp on the inside, and a bit over a length going concern, Baden's Lodger and Nassau's daughter coming to the 200, and Steel Bullet giving back as a sight leads a length and a half on Talon under the whip. Here's going concern, starting to run home pretty well, and further out, Baden's Lodger, Steel Bullet in front, 100 to go, still about a length and a half talon going concern on the outside but steel bullets run them all off their feet and steel bullet pretty well all the way Determined ride by Mick Dittman to score on Barrymore Lass. The filly inclined to race a little erratically in the straight, but Dittman keeps her going with the whip in the left hand. Around the corner at the 400 metres, and Barrymore Lass in front. Second is now Magic Hut. Glendower third, then Anna Daniela on the inside, and Red Express is battling on. Dittman's had to go now for Barrymore Lass on the outside. Red Express a half length away. They've dropped Magic Hut. Barrymore Lass at the moment just holding Red Express. Barrymore Lass a length clear. Red Express hanging out a shade, but the favourite's a little too good, Barrymore Barrow Molas wins at a length, the Red Express, a distant third magic hut. Kensai in the red and green colours and the breastplate bursts out of the ruck halfway down the straight and goes on to score impressively in the fourth. Over from Athenian Pride Commercial, balance coming into it, Sir Tipler looking for the run, then Kahana Bay, Kensai and Copper Wing, My Day Snookered at the 200 and the leader is Commercial Balance, here comes Kensai though, Kensai bridging the gap on Commercial Balance, Carmody pulls the whip and Kensai strode away and Kensai's home and hosed. This will be good news for you Lesbridge listening in Perth, Kensai bolts in. 
Second commercial balance, third Sir Tipler. Well timed ride by Jim Cassidy to score on Gamble on Me in the fifth event in the Mayfield Smith colours of white and red and uh, storming home down the centre of the track. Gamble on Me followed by Selda Rose. They straighten now. And Hasty Miss a length and a quarter on You're the Reason. Third on the outside, Devious Lady Gamble on Me is next and then comes Olympic Flame at the 200 metres. And Gamble on Me is coming down the outside. You're the Reason tending to struggle. Hasty Miss is just in front but Gamble on Me starting to pounce on it now. Hasty Miss on on the inside, grabbed by Gamble on me, and Gamble on me draws away to win. Then came the controversial finish to the sixth event. Watch the horses out deep on the track. Picarda, the widest runner, Bari's ace just on his inside. The back travel light and then must away. A further two lengths to Tricycle and the last two as they come round the corner, Elroy and Heroic Blaze. Straightening up, Mighty Tower comes back to Vari's ace. Vane top the inside, Picarda runs on. Tricycle still about six lengths from the leader is over on the inside. Now coming to the 200, Mighty Tower shifting ground. Picarda's tackling him and between them, Vari's ace, then Vane top, Picarda and Mighty Tower with Vary's ace, three in line, Picarda the outside, Vary's ace in the middle and Vary's ace has done too well. Vary's ace, a half head, Picarda third, Mighty Tower. Picarda getting the protest there, seventh event went to eight year old Nosy Parker who's in a close second position at this stage. He and the runner up Glowmunda have a titanic struggle all the way down the straight. Big Nosy Parker comes after Glowmunda, third position Mr Squiggles and then Swift Courier and a length of perspiration. At the 200 metres Glowmunda just in front of Nosy Parker trying his heart out, perspiration running on reasonably well from Swift Courier, Nosy Parker almost level with Glowmunda then perspiration. Glowmunda, Nosy Parker have a run tong to the line, Big Nosy he's going to do best. Nosy, I think. Yep, he's won it. Nosy Parker, I feel, by a nose to glow Monday. Third perspiration. Third Final event to one for the ladies here. Sandra Den, successful on Digger Starkus, who's in the horse in red blinkers in blue colours, light blue colours, about sixth as they straighten. A length further back is Mr Siren about to get a beautiful run through. Trog making ground through on the inside from Digger Starkus at the 300. Schwartz looms up to grab without reason, who's not giving in without a kick, though. Mr Siren pouncing on Schwartz now followed by Digger Starkus running home fast. Mr Siren starting to struggle. Schwartz gets his second wind and Schwartz in front. Digger Starkus closing now. Digger Starkus and Sandra Den and Digger Starkus gets up to win it. Big day there for Sandra. She was successful earlier in the day at Kembler and then uh, motored up to Rose Hill to take out the final event. Now the TAB information, two and one, the double $15.90, three, two and one, the treble $54.30 and the extra double from Rose Hill, and one and one, when in doubt, back to top weight, $57.30, the extra double. We'll take a break now in sports scene and return to have looking now at the uh, Mooney Valley meeting yesterday and the track was really on fire down there, some very fast times and a course record established in the opening event by uh, proudest moment, a first starter and subsequently that record was uh, bettered in the uh, final event with the winner there recording uh, 56.05. That is really motoring for a thousand metres but it was rock hard yesterday at Mooney Valley and this is an impressive debut proudest by moment. Proudest Moment to take out the first. first. Has taken the lead Proudest Moment from on the inside True Sculptor. A long gap further back disputed Pearl and West of France but a very impressive debut for Proudest Moment racing away and Proudest Moment wins at about three or four lengths. Second True Sculptor Puckle Harbour was rated a little unlucky at his last start. He made amends yesterday, defeating Mandator in the second. Tilbury Temptation, Italian verdict, and four lengths cameo favour, 3.50 out. Puckle Harbour with its head in front on the outside of trade line, battling on. A neck further back, D'Angelo, and two then to Mandator, battling on from Noblest Roman. Puckle Harbour took the lead on the home turn, White sitting confidently, a length in front. Mandator getting out and having a crack at it, and D'Angelo further out. He pulls a whip on Puckle Harbour. Mandator on the outside, trying hard. Puckle Harbour finds a half length though. Puckle Harbour's doing too well and Puckle Harbour will get there. Not a flash win but he's wanted a neck to Mandator. Three lengths away. Third in the race would have been uh, D'Angelo. Battling Bob Skelton was able to get Tamar Moon home from Hunter's ace in the third after the runner-up looked the one to beat as they straightened. Dropping out, then Crisidium pulled out wide, but about four lengths from the lead and a gap Batuta on the turn. Tamar Moon just in front of Cosine. Hunter's ace pulled to the outside. He's wound up and he's running home very quickly, straightening up Tamar Moon in front. But Hunter's ace, the top weight, raced up on the outside to grab him. They kick away from Cosine. Tamar Moon, Hunter's ace, stride for stride. Tamar Moon's ahead in front of Hunter's ace. Tamar Moon hanging on and Tamar Moon's got the money. He's kicked again to win a hit on the post to Hans's ace. Four lengths away, third. Crescidium ahead of Morning Minstrel. 
Lazip moved out uh, four off the fence at the home turn to take over in the fourth event and went on with the job to defeat Kemi and Pretty Plume. Locked away back on the inside of Art Lady at 100 to 1 from there, but on the turn Pretty Plume took the lead, but Lazip moved up quickly on the outside and grabbed it. Lazip took the lead, 200 out from Pretty Plume, and then Mia Stella followed by Karen A, then Kemi and Donna Louise, but Lazip's in front with 100 to go, got clear of uh, Pretty Plume. Kemi getting out late and flashing down the outside, but Lazip wins. A length Kemi, a hit away third Pretty Plume. Bow Lane took over at the home turn, looks set for a comfortable victory in the fifth, but got very tired at the finish and just held on from rare decision and noble cavalier. ...from a long way back is running on from Sir Gerard and Lighthouse Watson. Bow Lane shot to the front though on the turn. Raced a length and a half, Vera's boy, rare decision down the outside and noble cavalier running on. Bow Lane in front with 150 to go, rare decision, Sir Gerard, noble cavalier trying hard. Bow Lane the leader close to the line, he's riding hands and heels. Noble cavalier getting to him near the line, or oh, they hit it. Noble Cavalier may have grabbed Bow Lane to get up and win. There's nothing in it. Third home is rare decision on the outside. Deceptive photo going to Bow Lane there. The sixth the event, the favourite Torville, looked in trouble several times in the straight, but in the end scored decisively from Rolanda. Then Megan Vale, Savali, and further back Atlantic Crisis, Torville the leader. On the turn to straighten about a neck in front, Rolanda the danger on the outside, gets on terms of the 200. Two to Megan Vale, Atlantic Crisis, and Dream Ruler from a long way back. Torville on the inside, ahead in front of Rolanda there, clear of the others, Atlantic Crisis. Torville fights back again, the favourite, takes the lead from Rolanda and heights, rattling home well, but Torville for the money, a length the line Rolanda Seventh event went to Seeger at 16 to 1 under the whip before the home turn. It goes on with the job to defeat Brookwillow. Seeger a length and a half in front of Brookwillow on the home turn. They've got away jurisdiction. Burano, Warlike, and then Ras Flyer. Seeger first for home from Brookwillow, the outside, and Burano starting to finish well in the centre. Winter and Ras Flyer down the outside. Seeger in front with 100 to go from Brookwillow. Brookwillow trying to get to Seeger from Warlike and Burano, but Seeger's hanging on. And Seeger got the money a half length to Brookwillow, uh, three quarters away. Third is Warlike. Final event, a very quick run by Princely Hart to defeat Mr. Swanky and run a course record. There's six in front of running repairs and then further back, Vane Bow. On the turn, Mr. Swanky in front. Princely Hart ranged up on the outside, then vividly coming home well. Mr. Swanky first for home. Princely Hart on the outside is getting to him, though. Princely Hart raced up. He's ducking in on little Massett, but he takes the lead from Mr. Swanky and vividly. And little Johnny Massett, his first Metropolitan win. Princely Hart, a length and a half from the run home. Second home is Mr. Swanky. Though the eight events on a fine day in Melbourne, that in, in itself is a rarity. Now the TAV information, eight and three, the double 100. I've really been giving you know, some headaches for some weeks. They just haven't got it right yet, but it, it was a disaster yesterday. I'm just pleased it happened in Melbourne or south of the Tweed because if it happened in Brisbane, the guffaws from uh, around about Sydney and Melbourne would have been deafening. So uh, it's not just Brisbane who can have these uh, unfortunate incidents and uh, Sandown really have some homework to do there. The jockeys... Uh, Understandably very irate that the track wasn't safe in a 100 metre section between the 800 and 900 metres and they had to uh, delay the program while they moved the rail. And as I said, I'm pleased it happened south of the Tweed. Opening event at Eagle Farm yesterday, unearthed a, a genuine magic million contender in Lockton, La or Lord Lockton rather. He was very impressive in his debut. He's one out from the rails. He looked beaten at this stage but found plenty under hard riding. Poetic Sound has taken the lead. Poetic Sound is just in front of Lord Lockton who's boxing on game. He's written a report over on the inside. Lord Lockton's grabbed the front. It's Lord Lockton just in front of Poetic Sound. She's dying on a run. Written report still there on the inside. Lord Lockton, written report. They hit it and Lord Lockton's won it. Lord Lockton first written report. May have lasted uh, for second just in front of the fast finishing Zampatti. Bolter for the bookies in the second with Romney Tune successful at 25 to 1. Overcame a wide barrier to score handsomely. The runner-up Minutia had little luck, missed the start and had to come from well back in the big field to get second. Supreme Dynasty. They've got 250 metres to go and on the outside Romney Tune loomed up, poked his nose in front of Rapper 10. Panzer Prince battling on fairly well. Bush Rangers girl down the outside and Minuta starting to make up ground but late. They've got 100 metres to go and it's Romney Tune in front. Minuta is coming out after Romney Tune but the post is too close and Romney Tune goes on and scores by a length. Romney Tune first, Minuta second, Bush Rangers girl may have got third. 
third event, a nice ride by Les Harris on a, a Ghana Gypsy. She uh, drew quite nicely, but Harris put her in the box seat uh, quickly after the start. She's now on the fence behind the leader. She comes between those two horses and goes on to uh, score from Over the Blues, who made up ground. It's true as uh, next on the outside, and a Ghana Gypsy going through in the middle. Noble Impact is making ground on the outside, but running about a bit, and Over the Blues now getting into the clear and picking up ground. Petruccio just in front of a Ghana Gypsy, who's coming at the leader hard. A Ghana Gypsy grabbed the lead. Over the Blues is rocketing home at the end, but it's a Ghana Gypsy in front as they hit the wire, and a Ghana Gypsy has won it. A Ghana Gypsy first, Over the Blues second, Petruccio third. Well, Les Harris in sparkling form, and he wrapped up a winning double by taking out the next event on Flame of Tara, who's been underrated. She was suited with plenty of speed up front. She's the grey, threading her way towards the outside in the black and gold colours, and Harris brings her with a well-timed run to defeat Whiskey Coin. is coming into it. Flame of Tara down the outside with a good run, and then Kiki and Bell and Girl past the 200. Pilgrim's Angel the leader. She's starting to feel the pinch a little bit now. Whiskey Coin coming at her with Flame of Tara on the outside, and then Golden Sea. Flame of Tara loomed up to Whiskey Coin, and Flame of Tara grabs the lead close to the line and scores by a half length. It's Flame of Tara first, Whiskey Coin second, tight to third. Felt the effort of the runner up there, Whiskey Coin was outstanding coming off a wide barrier and I think she's one to follow in this class. We'll take a break now in sports scene and yep. our fifth event from Eagle Farm yesterday was the Forex Recognition Stakes and it went to Bold Endeavour and it was a bold ride by Graham Watson. Uh, he was Forced back into the ruck as they turned out of the straight, but uh, he hooked out in the back straight and took over the pacemaking role and was never headed. He was certainly seriously challenged on a few occasions in the straight, but Bold Endeavour gave plenty. Sasha Bajou, the grey, beautifully ridden by Peter Losh, ran second. It's Bold Endeavour, a length in front, Contential niggled at second. A length away third on the rails is Hanger, hard ridden, followed by Sasha Bijou off the rails at the right time. Then Artist Man on the outside, Luskin Knight saving ground near the rails. Fair Power forced to go a bit wide as they race towards the home turn and then Clavelli Dora and Tea Biscuit. They come onto the bend, 450 metres out. Bold Endeavour, he's hard at him now. He straightens up a length in front of Catanchel and Sasha Bijou on the outside, then Hanger dropping out of it. Clavelli Dora coming through in the middle to the outside, Fair Power, then Luskin Knight, Artist Man and Tea Biscuit, 250 metres to go. Bold Endeavour's just in front of Catanchel, Sasha Bijou on the outside, then Clavelli Dora, Luskin Knight and Fair Power. Bold Endeavour, he refuses to give in. He's just in front, Clavelli Dora, Sasha Bijou on the outside and Potential. Bold Endeavour's in front, he's fighting, he's going to win it! Bold Endeavour first. Bold Endeavour's beaten Sasha Bijou and potential third. Well earned Pat there from uh, Graham Watson, Bold Endeavour's rider, and well he might. That was his uh, second win in the recognition. He took out the race last year. We'll show you the slow-mo now of the final 200 metres, and it's under extreme pressure. Bold Endeavour's still in front. Catenchel's one out. Now going back towards the inside is Clavelli Dior, who had little room from this point. The winner just was inclined to drift away from the fence, and Mel Shoemaker, while he uh, wasn't disappointed for a run, didn't have clear room to get through, if uh, the mayor could have. At this stage, Bold Endeavour in front. Sasha Bajou making a late lunge. Catenchel always there in the straight. His effort was good and you'll notice Clavelli Dior does get chopped out a little bit right on the line to finish fourth. It's problematical whether it affected the result but Clavelli Dior certainly should have finished closer to the winner Bold Endeavour. Next event and the favourite and generally regarded as the good thing for the day Wandering Duke successful. He's in a yellow cap about five or six out and watch him accelerate from this point. He's putting in a big claim out in the middle of the track, 200 metres to go and Wandering Duke loomed up to them, hit the lead. It's Wandering Duke scooting clear about a length and a half in front of Indian Uprising and Stealthy Knight and the punters starting to cheer for the good thing and home he goes wandering duke goes on it wins by three lengths wandering duke first tight second and third bookies were back on the ropes after the success of wandering duke and it was a knockout punch in the next event when burglar of banff backed in from 11 to 4 to 2 to 1 was successful this is a big win under 59 kilos he's the wide runner there in the yellow blinkers going with him on his inside is clight but burglar of banff just too classy in front of burglar of banff who's running on gamely on the outside and then clight capro khan's dropped out of it nickel silver joined by burglar of banff he's forced to go for the whip on burglar of banff he's just in front of clight and nickel silver and burglar of banff under the big the 59, he's going to the post strongly to win it easily. Burglar of Banff first, Clyde second, third. And hear a lot more of Burglar of Banff. He may go to Sydney now to tackle the uh, Villiers in a fortnight. Final event and a good first up training performance by Bruce McLaughlin to produce Top the Ton, his first run since July. Successful here. He's in the red cap, four out, and he goes after the favourite, Meadow Sparrow. Clear of She's the Rocket and Great Hopes. 250 metres out. Top the Ton's coming at these leaders pretty quickly. It's Meadow Sparrow, Al Jadadi, and Top the Ton. Top the Ton's 
Sparrow's hit the lead on the outside. Top the Tutter hit in front of Meadow Sparrow. He's going a bit better. Top the Ton, yes, he's moving away from Meadow Sparrow. And Top the Ton races to the post to score by a length and a half. Top the Ton first, Meadow Sparrow second, tight for third. Oh, the eight events on the uh, Tattersall's Racing Club card yesterday. A very good meeting. And now the double and treble information. One and one, the double. Paid $16.10. Six, one and one, the uh, treble. A good dividend there, $120.10. And six pick went off yesterday. Division one for six, eleven, one, fifteen, one and five. And the dividend there, $16,704.30. And uh, Division two, sixty-seven twenty-five. We'll take a break now in sports scene. And now he's on Willico at this stage in white colours. Three out from the fence. Gets the split in the centre and under hard riding, Willico goes on with the job to, in the end, win decisively. Down the outside. Now, Mnemonic's the first beaten. And Willico has taken the lead narrowly from Murray's pick and Stimulus, followed then by Glenbourne, but it's Willico. Willico, 100 to go in no danger of defeat. Stimulus second, then Glenbourne, but a breeze for Willico. Wins at two lengths. Second is Stimulus, and third home was Glenbourne, and Paris Knight in front. Now Barker calling upon Card Shark for his effort. He's a length from the leader as they straighten. Two and a half to I Will, and then Prince Fair, Mr. Squiggles, and on the inside is best half. Card Shark pounces on Paris Knight now, and at the two 120 metres, Card Sharks drawn away from Paris Knight. Three lengths to Mr. Squiggles and Lucky Rass is next being hard ridden. It's Card Shark in front, 100 to go. Mr. Squiggles battles on with Paris Knight, but Card Shark's going to be a little too good. And Card Shark has beaten Paris Knight. Third home, Mr. Squiggles. A length the odds on Express pop, Red Express in a canter in the third. The Very side promising side sovereign red filly. the baldy face one third, just moving to the outside. Star Gem leads. Red Express has gone up to second. Third is Miss Complete and then Miss Tasman on the outside from Daryl's Daydream at the 200 metres and Red Express quickly swept alongside Star Gem and heads her off in third position Miss Tasman but Red Express looks the goods coming down to the 100 metres it's in no danger it's clearing away with every bound from Star Gem and Miss Tasman's going to end up third but a very easy win to the hot pot Red Express wins at nearly five lengths second Star Gem third Miss Tasman and as they Astral come rule of the second leg of a winning double for Marnie when she got up on the inside to take out the fourth runner-up Lady Zilla makes up plenty of ground late. Lady Zilla, Classic Ella and Canacea. At the 220, Cryptic Verse claimed on the inside by Astral Ruler. Lady Zilla's getting a clear crack as Johnston pulls her out three deep and then Canacea running home pretty well. Astral Ruler in front with a hundred to go from Lady Zilla on the outside. Astral Ruler is still in front. You'll hold Lady Zilla, Astral Ruler for the money. Astral Ruler's won. Arakin Fifth event and this was the controversial protest. Lady Jordana successful Lady from Bungabi the Grey and you'll notice them the uh, come very close together at the 100 metres mark. And at the 300, past the old ledger enclosure, Lady Jordana dashed away from Bungarby, Arrow King, and then Bell Toller. Now at the 200 metres, the leader is Lady Jordana. Bungarby's going to make a race of it with the fave. Lady Jordana, a length clear. Bungarby on the outside, a minute there to Arrow King. Oh, Lady Jordana's bought off the track. It's run right into Bungarby. There'll be a protest. Well, there was a protest there, entered by Kevin Motors, Moses, the uh, rider of the runner-up Bungarby, and we'll show you the uh, slow motion replay now. It's uh, Cassidy in front on Lady Jordana. Now he goes for the whip vigorously in the right hand. The mare's inclined to shift ground. Bungarby coming at her solidly on the outside. It's doubtful if the grey was going to reach her and the stewards took that view but you'll notice just here in a couple of strides Cassidy keeps going with the whip and she keeps boring out on the grey. Now Moses at that stage uh, perhaps overreacted a little bit. He uh, took a very strong hold on Bungarby and Lady Jordana was able to slip away again score by a couple of lengths. Certainly uh, there was grounds uh, for protest there. But Cassidy uh, was uh, Suspended until December 24, which does seem a shade harsh, uh, such a lengthy suspension for that uh, minor indiscretion. But uh, in Sydney, John Shrek rules and uh, Jim Cassidy will be out until uh, Christmas Eve. The sixth event uh, at Rose Hill yesterday went to Investor, who's clearly in front at this stage, and he boots away. He gets a bit tired at the finish, but Classic Hand was still a neck in arrears at the line. It's about a length and a half to two lengths on Take the Kitty, and French Legion not finishing quickly enough at the moment, and Investor rocketed away. Investor down to the 100 metres, about two lengths clear. They're closing in now. Take the kitty and classic hand on the outside. Investor can't pick his feet up but he's got to hang on and win. Yep, he's home. Investor is one of the battle ahead on the turn. Jim and Cassidy successful on Plum Shore in the seventh. Winarvi in the white colours. Makes a very titanic uh, struggle at the finish. And behind those is Barlu at the 200. Breakdancer puts the head in front of Plum Shore. Winarvi sticks on. A length or so tip running a bit of a race. Then Nosey Parker forget Pico. Winarvi 
Wanavi break dancer and Plumshaw three in line. Plumshaw kicks back. Wanavi on the outside might be going home, but better. Oh, this is almost a dead heat. There's nothing between Plumshaw and Wanavi. As they come round the corner, the event went to Twin Alps, who's cruising in second place at this stage, accelerates away at the 300 metres and scores in a canter from Shining Hero. Tropical Prince at the 300, and Rosnat's gone. Twin Alps dashes a length and a half. Shining Hero about two lengths to Tropical Prince, and then Gravy Train, but Twin Alps. The rider Malcolm Johnston has a peep, and Twin Alps follow running at the moment. About two and a half or three lengths on Shining Hero. Great go for third. Gravy Train battling on with Mount Curl, but. Oh, allowed to run to the line under its own steam. Twin Alps has scored. Shining Hero second, Gravy Train third. Twin Alps with plenty in reserve in that commanding win in the final event at Rose Hill. Now the TAB information, five and five was the double, $17.50. Two, five and five, the treble combination, $404.40, and the extra double from Rose Hill, two and four, paid $25.20. We'll take a break and uh, come back and have a look at Sandown, where they took a long break half one yesterday. Darren Gauci was uh, frustrated in the opening four events. He finished in the runners-up stall. But, uh, later in the day, there was a little joy for him. No joy for the punters who laid odds on in the opening event with uh, Greg Hall's Mount Tennessee Vane uh, finishing a pretty moderate fourth. The winner here, Neo Classic, completed uh, the great run of Michael Clark. She's in third place this stage but goes home strongly. Tennessee Bay not doing enough. Neo Classic on the outside starting to sprint home quickly. Walbert and Diamond in front with a hundred to go. Neo Classic is pegging it back with every stride. Walbert and Diamond in front. Neo Classic flying to it. They hit the line. I reckon it's got up on the last stride. Neo Classic over Walbert and Diamond. Two lengths away. Third match my fire. In the green colours light up is well back as they straighten up at Rockets home. Though inclined to shift in a little bit in the last 50 metres defeats Christmas hamper decisively. Down the outside but Will Tell dash to the front. At the 200 metre mark, kicked a couple of lengths in front of Christmas Hamper. She's running on well, then light up from a long way back. At the 100 metre mark, Will Tell in front, Christmas Hamper and light up again to get her though. Light up, swept up on the outside and grabbed the lead, ducked in. Christmas Hamper kicks again, light up in front near the line and light up gets up to win ahead. Christmas Hamper second, a half away third, Will Tell. Models Call me the breeze with the baldy face, slices up uh, towards the inside to defeat the Sovereign Dagger and Darren Gauchy second again in the third event. Son has now put his head in front, but here's Call me the breeze getting up on the inside and Sovereign Dagger and Briquillo further out. They've got to the leader now. Sovereign Dagger took the lead from Call Me The Breeze on the rail. They'll settle down and fight it out. Sovereign Dagger, Gauchi on the outside, pulls the whip. Call Me The Breeze getting up on his inside. Call Me The Breeze has grabbed him near the line and Call Me The Breeze has put his nose in front. Call Me The Breeze and nose on the line, Sovereign Dagger. Roman Smart three-year-old Roman, Roman Laurel showed great acceleration in the straight. He's three out with the yellow cap. He sprints clear at this stage as untroubled to defeat Bo Trist. 200 metres to go and look them have them covered now from Kiskin and on the inside then further back is judges rule from Bowser calling but Willits has gone for home and this is safely home I'd say Roman Laurel exploded away four lengths in front of Bowser calling Botris from a mile back running on but Roman Laurel wins easily about two and a half lengths Botris a great run second and Saliva four seconds in a row to Darren Gauchy but here's victory at last on Apricot Colonel who was in the blinkers and sprints well clear at this stage further back to Red Bower Admiral Boyer struggling the leader Apricot Colonel the 200 metre mark Capstan Bay on the outside, gradually wearing him down. They're clear of Red Bower. Gauchy riding hard on Apricot Colonel. Capstan Bay, Trelaw trying hard from Red Bower. But the Gauch is going to break through. And it's Apricot Colonel in front of Capstan Bay. Apricot Colonel hanging on near the line. He wins. Apricot Colonel ahead on the line, Capstan Bay. Third over on the inside, Red Bower. Mean Dancer at uh, 33 to 1, one more like an even money chance scored by three links from Fashion Fun. They've raced right away from Kingdom Ruler Fashion Fun. Foresight the inside and on the outside of it, Mean Dancer stride for stride. Mean Dancer takes the lead, races away from Foresight, a gap Kingdom Ruler and Fashion Fun. But Mean Dancer raced away, it's safely home, hot made from a long way back. But Mean Dancer will get the money about three links in the run home. Great battle for the miners, possibly Fashion Fun and nose in front of Kingdom Ruler. Kara Bahar uh, in the, took over about the 200 metres in the seventh event, went on to defeat Come Tell. You guessed it, ridden by Darren Gauchy, seconds, number five. Bit of a star at the 250 metre mark, three lengths for the back, Come Tell, and Miracol Lass in Hunker Berwick, but Kara Bahar's race to the front of the 150. Dashed away now from Come Tell, getting to second from Bit of a Star, then Hunker Berwick, but Kara Bahar, the top weight. Oh, she's going to win easily today. She's getting tied to the line, but Kara Bahar about three lengths, Come Tell. Third, Hunker Berwick, I'd say, from Blue Grotto and Diggers Lass. At King Darius in front at this stage, has raced a little erratically from this point, but was able to defeat Mervani quite decisively. King Darius, the leader with 150 to go from Mervani, coming home well, Bally Brook down the outside, Gourmet Prince, Greek note, 
Uh, the leader is still King Darius from Mervani getting up on the inside. Honeybridge rattling home. King Darius in front of Mervani and Honeybridge. And King Darius has won the last. King Darius drifted out, but it's got the money. Tight for second. Mervani and Honeybridge up on the inside. Although the eight events from Sandown yesterday, as we mentioned earlier, they had their problems with the tracks and uh, it has been a problem over several meetings now at Sandown. Perhaps they might have to suspend racing there until they get their act together. Now the TAV information, eight and one the double, eight, one hundred and nine dollars sixty, two eight and one the treble, three hundred and three dollars seventy and the extra double from Sandown, eight and eleven paid five hundred and sixteen dollars thirty. We've got a very big week in racing in Brisbane this week at Eagle Farm on Wednesday. There's going to be a bumper midweek meeting there, Thursday at Gatton, and it's 4X Stakes Day at Doomben next Saturday, so plenty of action. And uh, Marshall, I think you've got a little bit more news for us. We can win that car down at Albion Park. Yes, Bart, a terrific uh, incentive for going. Big day for the punters yesterday. The bookies took a real drubbing. Uh, six favourites successful, and uh, every race was uh, a loser for the bookies. And uh, Brian Ogilvy, I spoke to after the last event, said it was his worst day ever. So I shudder to think uh, just what the collective total of the bookies' losses yesterday. So an early Christmas present for the punters. And they were off uh, on the right leg in the opening event. Gallery King very heavily back to start yeah, seven to four on. And he scored impressively. He's just working into the clear now in the green colours. To the leader. Condare on the outside running on fairly well. Impressive is still the leader. Here's Gallery King. He's winding up quickly on the outside. Messingham goes for the web and he shoots straight past Impressive and Gallery King is home and hosed. Gallery King first by three lengths, second Impressive and third never aware. I think we're going to hear a lot more of uh, Gallery King. He's lightly raced, a well-bred three-year-old, and uh, his astute trainer, Des Burns, has got his eyes on some very big races next year. Second event went to Crown Hope, the one we mentioned as a Magic Million yeah, contender, and pretty impressively, too. She's the grey and the green colours in second place. She gets past Roses for us pretty quickly. ...on the turn into the straight, Grand Wagon moving up to be third, and then Magic Singer on the outside, Crown Hope the grey, loomed up on the outside of Roses for us, 150 to go. Crown Hope written hands and heels and neck in front of Roses for us. Roses for us, boxing on goal but the other filly's too classy and Crown Hope moves away to win it by almost a length at the end. Crown Hope first, Roses for us second, Grand Wagon third. Third was the novice handicap and a storming finish gave King Rang victory after Pioneer Valley, the favourite, looks certain to score at the 200 metres. He dashed three lengths clear and he got very weary at the finish. Changements on the inside. Pioneer Valley has now popped the big question. He's running on strongly, moving up to tackle those leaders. They've got 300 metres to go and Pioneer Valley swept to the lead on the outside. He shot away from them. He's about a length and a half in front of Hoy of Flight, making ground as King Rang, then Sheet Hand and Spiralite flying home at the end. It's Pioneer Valley in front. King Rang is mowing him down. He He's going to get him, King Rang. Yes, I think he's won it. King Rang, I'd say, has just beaten Pioneer Valley, but they're wide apart. Spiralite third. Then... Fourth event uh, went to Zampatti. The unlucky runner, Prince Anton, who finished second. He was slowly away, had to do a lot of work in the middle stages, and he's certain to improve. Yet another who's in the magic million, Prince Anton. The leader as they straighten up. He's about a neck in front of Puppy Love. They're three lengths in front of Zampatti, who's under the whip and chasing Prince Anton, followed by Spare Thought, and then Mud Crab and Head for Glory down the outside. Prince Anton in front. Zampatti coming at him hard now. Prince Anton and Zampatti. Zampatti dashed over the outside of Prince Anton. And she shoots clear close to the line. She's a good filly. And Zampatti went on to beat Prince Anton. Third was Spare a Thought. Heavily back to Zampatti, successful, but may have been a shade lucky to get the money. Prince Anton looked decidedly unlucky. There were the first four from Doombin yesterday. The event on the Doombin card yesterday was the main event, the 4X stakes. It landed some big bets uh, with Paris Bow successful here. Uh, I think you could make a case that uh, the runner-up, Alamander Boy, was unlucky. He was slowly away and forced wide, and he did very well to go under by a long head. And the third place getter poured in didn't have a lot of luck either. He was checked on a couple of occasions in the early stages. Boy on the outside, Paris Bow looking for the way clear. Poured into the outside has now popped the big question and he's running on strongly 300 meters out high sport is the leader paris bow into the clears coming with a great run alamander boy and put in on the outside paris bow loomed up to them hit the lead paris bow's just in front of alamander boy paris bow alamander boy there's only about a head in it they hit the line paris bow first paris bow has just beaten alamander boy put in i think third it was a superb first up training performance by Gordon Williams to produce Paris Bow for that win at his first start since July. We'll show the uh, slow-mo now of the final stages and uh, just as they straightened Paris Bow was in a little bit of trouble getting a run. Mel Shoemaker was able to angle him around the heels of High Sport who's two out. 
Paris both three out, then Alamander Boy and Port in the widest runner. Power Arrow and Palace Intrigue the other two. It's a good finish, only a uh, couple of lengths between the seven runners. Now Paris Bow gets to the lead in the orange colours. Alamander Boy battling on strongly. As I mentioned, he was slowly won, did a lot of work. So this is a game effort by Alamander Boy to go under by a head. But it's Mel Shoemaker with the uh, the whip in the right hand getting Paris Bow to just keep kicking enough to hold off Alamander Boy. Port in uh, just inclined to shift in a little bit on the outside in a very close third. And as I said, a very good finish there with only a couple of lengths between the seven runners. The sixth event was the uh, mile open handicap and Mendham Ladd ran right up to his uh, fine last to start go, third to career go, away with this at the finish. He went on to score by two and a quarter lengths in a very impressive performance. Mendham Ladd coming to the outside, putting in a big run. 200 metres to go. Vigo's just in front of Bo Zephyr. Here comes Mendham Ladd with a great run. Mendham Ladd hits the lead, races away from them. He's going to beat them easily. Mendham Ladd pushed right out with the whip, scoots away and wins it by three lengths. Mendham Ladd first, second in the race, Bo Zephyr and third, how to blush. The bookie's a bit uh, groggy after Mendham Ladd was successful, but uh, looking decidedly uh, bloodied after the uh, success of My Blue Kingdom in the seventh event. He was generally regarded as a, a weighted certainty. He was well back in the middle stages, but the leaders came back to him in the straight. He went to the line strongly and well handled by Andrew Paramore. My Blue Kingdom, I feel certain, is quickly going to get through to the open class ranks again. He was uh, very heavily backed, as I mentioned. Bookies took a few risks with him. At this stage, they were starting to take gambles. He started the five to four favourite. I thought the, uh, the effort of the run runner-up Belmont Air very good and one I think that is close to a win was Princess Vey who finished in fourth placing. This is how My Blue Kingdom came from uh, second last in the uh, middle stages. Now he's in lime green colours, he's only in front of a couple of runners and he's about the middle of the ruck at this stage, switching back towards the inside. Struggling a little bit on the outside, Bebo running on fairly well, Stenmark and My Blue Kingdom now starting to drive through in the centre. Princess Vey is the leader, here comes the favourite, he's coming with a rattling run on the outside, look at him go, My Blue Kingdom, he dashed up to the races to the front and races away. My Blue Kingdom first. Belmont Air will get second. Fairly close third. Probably Princess Bay just in front of... Well, that set the uh, bookies up for the knockout punch and along it came in the shape of Arbalest, a very smart three-year-old. He's cruising in third place at this stage. Well handled by Shane Scriven who took the sit on him and he goes right on with the job in the straight. Handsome Pal wide there in the blue colours battles on well for second. Then Bonnie Wander equip and Handsome Pal now pulled to the extreme outside. Arbalest race to the front. 150 metres to go. Scriven's gone for the whip on him. He's kicked away. He's two lengths in front of Handsome Pal and Sari Girl. And it's going to be an easy one for Arbalest. He's streaking to the line to win it easily. And it's Arbalest first, Handsome Pal second, third, Sari Girl just in front of... Explain. Well, the punters have got no excuses for not providing plenty of Christmas presents for the family after six favourites on the eight-event Doombin card yesterday. Now the TAB information, one and eleven the double, eleven dollars sixty. Five, one and eleven the treble, seventy-four dollars thirty. And six pick yesterday. Looks like uh, plenty of punters uh, managed to get the right combination there. Five, six, one, five, eleven, and three. Paid one hundred and eighty-three dollars sixty-five. Division one, division two, five dollars seventy-five, and uh, down to ninety cents for division four. So uh, not much uh, change left over there to buy a Christmas present. We'll take a break now in sports scene. Go back and have a look at the rating yesterday. Malcolm Johnston in fine form. Four winners down there. And there was uh, plenty of action from the opening bell. The first event provided a protest. The successful uh, one was What a Life, first yeah, past the post. Are. Good run by Roman General, the, the uh, Queensland the owned youngster. Now he's in fifth first place at this stage. Race. Watch the way he gets General to the line. General and Lord Foxing, but What a Life takes the clear cut lead at the 200. A length on Triple Tristram, followed by Sober Lad dropping off, and then Densaco and Roman General. What a Life in front on the outside. Triple Tristram is battling on well. What a Life, just the leader from Triple Tristram, and What a Life will just win. What a life, one and a half head triple Tristram. Second event went to Senchai, who's in the white colours with the red cap moving out up three out from the fence. Les's choice, the widest runner in the green, battles on well for third. Fitters dropped off, and a length further back is Les's choice. Hard ridden, a rider's lost his whip too at the 200. And Senchai races a length and a half clear on Canacy at Deed Star. And Les's choice on the outside, but it's Senchai in front and in no danger. And Senchai raced home to beat Deed Star. Third event, and here comes the Magic Million favourite, Mother Duck, galloping sweetly out in front, and she increases her advantage from this point. Success on the outside, and further back is Elder Time, but Mother Duck comes to the 200, and she's galloping boldly. She's increasing her lead on Anna Daniela, and the good go for third between Elder Time, Success, Valsha, Glendower, and on the inside, she animus. But Mother Duck is simply flying, allowed now to run to the line under her own steam. She bolts in, Mother Duck. 
Fourth event went to Rama King, who uh, takes over at the 100 metre mark. Looks set for a comfortable victory in the pink colours, Rama King, but flying Gypsy lunges to just fail. Miami Blue, Rama King battles on with Big Valdu. Mr. Siren trying to get clear, and then Schwartz down the outside from Olympic Flame, and Flying Gypsy running on well. Rama King grabbed the lead narrowly from My Parade. Flying Gypsy, Mr. Siren can't get clear from Schwartz. Flying Gypsy's after Rama King with Schwartz. Rama King is just in front as they reach the line. He'll get there, Rama King. Christmas Cup went to Shane Dye, just back from the States, successful here on commercial balance. Uh, balance. And Panama Jack makes up plenty of territory in the last 50 metres. Come into the picture from Lance Lotto and then Panama Jack. At the 250 metres, and now Commercial Balance has raced to the lead. And at the 200 and past it, Commercial Balance, a length and a half Panama Jack. And then Kenzai and Camille Assad, but it's Commercial Balance in front with 100 to go. And in fact, it's in no danger. Panama Jack running home pretty well. Too late. Commercial Balance has just one from Panama Jack. It was Malcolm Johnston all the way on True Reason who scores comfortably from Red Sails. Has veered to the outside and as they straighten up and True Reason in front of him about a three quarters of a length break he has now. Second is Red Sails sticking on well but True Reason holding him at the moment. Then comes Ancient Mariner pulling out three deep from Avondale Star. True Reason in front. Ancient Mariner, Red Sails and Avondale Star try to catch True Reason but they won't and this is a treble for Mal Johnston. True Reason a length and a quarter on the line, two Red Sails ahead of... Another all-the-way victory in the Walter Handicap with Hot on Aces repeating his Ipswich Cup success of this year in leading throughout to score at 12-1. Then fair verdict and Night Rain not getting much room. 220 out now. Hot on Aces giving back as a great side. A length and a half on perspiration. Then Altai Sun and Night Rain. 100 to go now. And it's Hot on Aces. A length and a half clear on perspiration and Night Rain. And Hot on Aces is going to be untroubled. And Hot on Aces scores by a length on the line. Country trained tingling was successful in the final event. Watch the fall here at the home turn. And oh, there's a fall. There's a fall. There's two of them down. Our anniversary is one. Targlish is the other. Oh, nasty, nasty. 300 to go. Tingling kicked away here. Second posse is taken by lunch on Sunday. And then comes on the inside Calypso King. But tingling looking good. And the rider Mel Johnston too. This is going to be four for Malcolm today. And four out of four for tingling. Black Valley flying home. But it's tingling. Tingling, Tingling by three, Black Valley second, third... Very promising galloper, Tingling. As I mentioned there, that fall at the home turn will show the slow-mo now, and it did look very bad. Now, Targlish is just behind the leaders, just clipped the heels of one there. And you'll notice Kevin Moses dumped heavily on the turf, and Targlish somehow just misses him by centimetres. And then uh, our anniversary and Neil Payne coming along behind um, was uh, just... Uh, stumbled and Payne was catapulted over the top of our anniversary. You can see Moses there just managing to keep out away from the fallen runner as the field's badly disrupted. And our anniversary was out the back uh, minding his own business and uh, next minute uh, he just stumbles here and Neil Payne just nowhere to go, just sent straight over the horse's head. And watch the way he hits the ground, looked very bad at this stage and uh, he bounces up and goes down again. Now I just had the uh, latest word from Sydney is that uh, miraculously the only injuries suffered are Kevin Moses, who was first down, has a broken left ankle, and uh, Neil Payne has a, a broken rib. Both have been cleared of uh, head injuries, and it appears likely that Payne will be released from hospital today, and Kevin Moses perhaps later in the week. But it does uh, appear that his only injury is a, a fairly nasty uh, break to his left ankle. He'll be out of action for some time, but uh, just a miracle that uh, neither jockey sustained more serious injuries. Now the TAB information for the Rose Hill meeting, 5 and 3 the double, $73.40, 11, 5 and 3 the treble, $1,277. And the extra double from Rose Hill, 4 and 14, paid $5.10, two well fancied ones there. We'll take a break now in sports scene. In sports scene, time now to look at the Flemington meeting yesterday. The uh, successful rider there, Michael Clark, yet again wrapping up a winning treble. What fine form he's been in in recent months. Opening event was the hurdle, and plenty of action here as they come down towards the last, it's Royal Sea and Noblest Roman battling it out from Italian Verdict. The 300 metre mark from Royal Sea and Italian Verdict at the second last. He jumped it well, Noblest Roman. Italian Verdict went down. He went down hard and Noblest Roman dumbing down towards the last is clear. He looks to have the measure over Royal Sea as they go to the last. He's over it in front, Noblest Roman about a length to Royal Sea, fighting on. 15 lengths to Fumigal the third. Noblest Roman in front. Royal Sea fights back on the inside. He's coming again. Royal Sea's grabbed the favourite again. And Peter Delaney back to Australia from the UK trip and he's got the money on Royal Seas, fought back to win. Favourite backers were counting their money when Noblest Roman took over uh, halfway down the straight, but he was uh, worried out of the money. Now, we'll show you the slow-mo now of the fall. Now, Italian Verdict's got third place wrapped up and 
possibly a winning chance at this stage. He comes to the last and he just doesn't see it. He just goes straight through it. Poor old Italian verdict. Down he goes and away went the trifecta punters. Very heavy fall there. As we've mentioned many times, who'd be a hurdle jockey? They should get uh, about $1,000 appearance money. But uh, somehow or other they seem to bounce up. Italian verdict uh, trying to get to his feet. It appears as though he's escaped injury. And uh, normally these hurdle jockeys also. But, uh, well, it is uh, another miracle that there's not uh, more serious injuries there. Italian verdict, uh, he's right, he's up and running. Second event was the uh, first leg of a winning treble to uh, Michael Clark, successful on uh, Wicked Smile, who relished uh, blinkers for the first time yesterday. She's hard up against the outside rail as they charge down the Flemington straight. But Wicked Smile doing it well on against the outside rail. Race two to four side, followed by Mean Dancer, and then further back, True Beauty struggling, followed by Silver Satellite. But the blinkers today for Wicked Smile at the tower, and she's two in front. Foresight trying hard. Clark has to shake her up, the leader, Wicked Smile. She's two in front of Foresight and Mean Dancer against the outside fence it's wicked smile a length and a half to foresight third event went to colonial chief it's clark again proudest moment the odds on favorite just inclined to race a little erratically four in from the outside colonial fence chief in front of madonna lily proudest moment i don't want to be on it at the moment it's starting to struggle and then disputed pearl colonial chief has got to the front with 200 meters to go from madonna lily proudest moment under desperate riding is starting to get to them with disputed pearl colonial chief and neck in front of proudest moment and madonna lily and colonial chief is going to get the money and it's clark again colonial chief three quarters to proudest moment the 10 to 1 chance, wholesome racing in Blinkers, race swept the lead Mystic at the 150 race, metre mark to defeat Lay's Choice in the fourth. Two to Imperial Regina running in the third, they're followed for the back by Lay's Choice running on. Secret Diamond starting to get through and then D'Angelo stops losing in front, but here's Lay's Choice. Lay's Choice raced up at the 200 metre mark and grab stops snoozing. Then Mystic Monarch, Secret Diamond and now Wholesam. Don't tell me it's Wholesam on the outside. Hasn't won since 1984, takes the lead. Wholesam, it must be Christmas. He's come Coming away, whole Sam. He's too good for them. Whole Sam by two lengths. We just got see the winter beautifully ridden by Clark takes out the fifth from Stable Gossip, who looks certain to score at the 200 metres. Lane Emulus pulled out wide from Red Opaque and Janeau. At the 400, King Darius in front of Kale to the Wind and Rass Flyer. Then Stable Gossip followed for the back by the Vagrant. Baptized trying to get clear with Winter. King Darius grabbed by the Vagrant and Stable Gossip. Then for the back jurisdiction and Winter starting to come home well. Stable Gossip got to the front from the Vagrant. Winter getting out late down the outside at Stable Gossip. The Vagrant and Winter on the outside. Side, stable gossip winter coming at him winter i reckon going better and i reckon winter on the last stride over stable the sixth event went to Dame Vengeance, nicely ridden by Darren Gouchy. Poised just behind the leaders at this stage, looking for a run. The horse, uh, the jockey rather, with the white sleeves on. Once uh, Dame Vengeance gets into the clear, she goes the line strongly to defeat Hunza's ace. Raced up and grabbed the lead from Spear Late Gilgood's Bell. Dame Vengeance getting into the daylight, but Hunza's ace took the lead. Dame Vengeance gets out now from Shore and Free at the 150. Willits goes for home on Hunza's ace, but the filly on the outside is the danger. Dame Vengeance races up at the 100 metre mark to grab Hunza's ace. Dame Vengeance takes a lead for Gauchi and she's coming away Dame Vengeance to win a half length for Hunza's ace three lengths sure and free away third very confident ride by Greg Hall on Keepers, who went on to score a very easy victory in the seventh. Keepers cruising up towards the leaders in the dark colours, the horse with the blinkers on, under a big hold from Hall. Glenn Morriston from Sylai. At the 300, they've got to Gabble. Moving up, Keepers on the outside, raced up with Noble Cavalier. They take the lead from Gabble. They're four in front of Glenn Morriston, followed by Red Bar and Sylai. Keepers has got to the front with 200 metres to go over Noble Cavalier. Then Gabble and the others are all struggling, but it's Keepers sprinting away. Here's the big Big day for Brian Ralph. Keepers, the stable mate of Hull Sam, racing away and it's all over. Keepers is going to canter home by five lengths. Noble Cavalier second, two lengths to Gavel third. Final event was a slowly run affair and that allowed the leader Mouton to kick well clear in the straight and untroubled to score by four lengths. 500 to go, went up to Mouton. Four or five for the back to Valier, then Beau Trist under the whip and so is Cossack Warrior. They look to be too far back, but Mouton is doing it pretty well at the 300 metre mark. Over a length in front of Dead of Night, struggling three lengths to Valier. Then the favourites not making ground, but Mouton's got away at the 150 metre mark. Murphy's giving him an easy time to the line. He's four in front of Dead of Night and de Valier further back Cossack Warrior, but Mouton is a mile too good for them. And Mouton wins it about four lengths on the run home. Second placing Dead of Night and those de Valier. All the way to Mouton in the final event. Now the TAB information for the Flemington meeting. 13 and 3, the double, $121.90. 6, 13 and 3, the treble, $1,773.20. And the extra double from Flemington, 2 and 3, paid $25.50.
This week in racing, we have a meeting at Eagle Farm on Tuesday, Bundamba on Wednesday, and the first of the Christmas meetings at Eagle Farm next Saturday. And now, uh, just to interrupt for Pat, what are you looking for, jobs? Coaster to Bozza, Minuta's hanging on, Coaster's lunging right on the line, and Coaster's got up to win it. Coaster's beaten a Bozza or Minuta, great three-way go as they split the wire. Well, a controversial finish here, and there was a protest lodged by Graham Watson, the rider of one of the dead heaters for second, a Bozza, uh, claiming that the winner... Coast had moved in over the final stages. Now this is at the 200 metres, Minutia clear, Abozza's uh, three out in the pink and black colours and the winner Coast. You'll notice David Murphy just inclined to uh, uh, pull her off at that stage as she was ducking in Coast. Now, there seemed to be clear room between the two as they went to the line. Stewards ruled that it was a frivolous protest by uh, Graham Watson and fined him $100. Minutia close in third place but uh, I thought a little disappointing yesterday, the favourite. Third event was the Noel graduation and first leg of a winning double to Rod Heaslip, the former New Zealand jockey and this mare showed nice acceleration in the straight. She settled well uh, just uh, past midfield. Starting to make a move here. She's in uh, dark blue colours with a green cap in about sixth or seventh place, moving towards the outside, and she sustains a run from this point to defeat Great Mogul and Lickalong. Taken on quickly by Lickalong on the outside. Great Mogul running up into third place, followed by Clavelli Dora and then Miss Egmont, 250 metres to go. Lickalong's just in front of Great Mogul. Miss Egmont third on the outside. Clavelli Dora struggling at the moment. She can't win the favourite. Miss Egmont's get the lead. It's Miss Egmont just in front of Great Mogul who's fighting back. Miss Egmont in front of Great Mogul. Yes, she's too good, Miss Egmont. She shoots away close to the line and wins it by a length and a half. Miss Egmont first, Great Mogul second, Lick along third, then Lucifer Lad. Well, Miss Egmont proving herself something of a specialist over the 2100 metres course at Eagle Farm. Three of her four wins have been recorded at that distance and on the big track. Fourth event was the second division of the Maiden for the Phillies and Mares and well-deserved victory to Vane Tiara. She was unlucky at her last start and this uh, wraps up a winning double for Heaslip. Uh, Vane Tiara defeating Sports Special. Now the leader is Intent who shows great courage to fight on well under her big weight. Intent straightens up almost a length in front of Sports Special. True reward to the outside running on Gamely. And now Vane Tiara popped the big question and is coming into it with a well-timed run. 250 metres to go and out in the middle of the track Vane Tiara loomed up to hit the lead. It's Vane Tiara just in front of Sports Special and Intent then True Reward. Bush Rangers girl running on fairly well. Vane Tiara's just in front. Intense kicking again near the inside. Vane Tiara in front. They hit it and Vane Tiara has won it by a neck. Vane Tiara first. Close second and third. Sports Special or Intent then Miss... Vane Tiara taking out the fourth event. We'll take a break now in Sports Scene and return to have a look at the remainder of the program. Welcome back to uh, Sports Scene, our uh, final edition before Christmas. And the Christmas special for the punters yesterday, well, one of them was Nuclear Dream in the fifth event. Uh, he scored at Eagle Farm in record equaling time on Tuesday and he backed up to take out the December handicap in narrow but impressive style and well ridden by uh, Brian York, his first day back from suspension. Cobb and Co next on the inside of King Show and then Mona Star to the outside prize dash and then Aussie Boy, Artist Man just in front of Catential. Bo Zephyr grabbed them on the outside and passed the 300 metre mark. Bo Zephyr's the leader, here's Nuclear Dream and Prince Bourbon winding up on the outside. Hangers just behind them, Nuclear Dream's hit the lead. York's gone for the whip on him, he's about to head in front of Prince Bourbon, they're going to fight it out. Nuclear Dream's just in front of Prince Bourbon, then vice versa. Nuclear Dream in front, they hit the wire and Nuclear Dream has won it by a neck. Nuclear Dream first, Prince Bourbon second, vice versa third, then King Show. Well, he's been a very underrated horse nuclear dream. That was his longest distance attempted yesterday, 1,800 metres, and he ran it out very strongly, suggesting that uh, he could go a little further. Uh, perhaps 2,000 metres around Durban would suit him now. Sixth event was the flying handicap, and the odds on popped Tolai successfully. He gained a nice run on along the inside as they straightened, but he always looked to be in command, and he ran very fast time, 1.9.1. He's going to have a break now and uh, come back towards the winter races. He's the horse in third place at this stage in the green colours, and you'll notice him get a run along the inside as Brugolino just uh, wobbled a little bit around the corner. The leader goes a little wide on the turn into the straight and Tolai's got the run on the inside if he's good enough. Bugolino joined by Tolai and Sheer Force coming at the pair of them on the outside. Just behind the Meadow Sparrow and then Selwyn High Sport and Twin Peaks. 150 metres to go. Tolai's taken the lead. Kicks away from Bugolino. He's about a length in front. Tolai a length in front of Bugolino who's fighting on gamely. But Tolai's too good for them in the run to the post and it's Tolai the terrific today. He wins it by a length. Tolai first. Bugolino second. Selwyn or Meadow Sparrow in a photo for third. Yes, I think uh, Tolai relished being back on top of the ground yesterday. He was a failure, uh, had his previous start on a soft track at uh, Doombin. 
Well, it's a big uh, jump from a graduation stakes at uh, Eagle Farm in December to the Elders Handicap uh, next June. But I think that's the uh, jump that Burglar of Banff can make. He was very impressive yesterday. He ran fast time, and he point two outside the uh, course and class record for the 1,300 metres. And uh, bear in mind that he did go an extra 13 metres with the rail out yesterday. He won with a little bit in hand, and uh, I think uh, next year he's going to be a big race winner for sure. He's in second place at this stage and has the race in his keeping this far from home. 400 metres to go, and here comes Burglar of Banff on the outside, he raced straight past Corinda Park, 300 metres to go and the burglars dashed away from them three lengths in front of Corinda Park then Ram Nala who started to make up ground with Raymond Draftsman, Supreme Walk My Blue Kingdom running on fairly well at the end but this is an easy one for Burglar of Banff, he's going to win it by six lengths and he's cruising to the line a big winner, Burglar of Banff first, photo finish second and third between My Blue Kingdom and Raymond Draftsman well, the bookies were really uh, back on the ropes after the success of Burglar of Banff and along came the knockout punch, Island Kingdom. Another very uh, impressive performance yesterday. In a day of uh, some good efforts, uh, this was one to really uh, jot down for the future. Island Kingdom, he gained a split just after they straightened and uh, I like the way he really accelerated from that point. He went on to score easily. He didn't carry much weight and uh, the opposition was moderate, but I think there's improvement in him. And I do feel he's going to be better suited over more ground. He's in reddish colours in about fourth place. You'll notice him go for a split in the centre. Sovereign, well in the straight now, 350 metres to go. Whiskey Coin is uh, joined quickly by Tolga Town. Island Kingdom's going for a run in the middle. There's not much room, but he's through. Island Kingdom dashed up to them on the outside. 200 metres to go, and the favourite races to the front. It's Island Kingdom about a length in front of Whiskey Coin. Then Zavada Light and Petruccio, but it's all Island Kingdom. He's spearing away at the end. He's going to win it easily. He wins it by three lengths. Island Kingdom first, Bark Clava flash team got second, beat Whiskey Coin for the minor money. Favourite number five successful on the eight event Eagle Farm card and the punters went home cheering. Now the TAB information on the Eagle Farm meeting. One and three, the double, five dollars ten. Six, one and three, the treble, seventy dollars ninety. And six pick yesterday, ninety two, ninety five, the division one dividend and the numbers there, six, one, one, three and eight. Some well fancied runners there. We'll take a break in sports scene, see if we can get some more of those super trim track commercials going and come back and have a look at the Villiers Stakes Day at Randwick. It's uh, Villiers Day, only joking about the commercials being better than the show. Uh, it was uh, Villiers Day yesterday. <laughs> Miss Keating uh, taking out the opening event, uh, well named out of uh, Capital Gain and Miss Keating uh, got a nice run through on the inside. She just dwelt a little bit at the start. At, uh, from the home turn on, Mick Dittman seemed to have uh, her going the right way. It was a good effort by the runner-up, Timely Move, who stuck with Miss Keating most of the way down the straight was just uh, the other filly just a shade too good but I think timely move might be one to follow and an, interestingly another uh, from the Smith stable yesterday uh, the two-year-old uh, I'm ready taking out the third event he's uh, certainly in the magic million with a chance now so it looks like uh, Tommy Smith and Mick Dippen will be at uh, the coast on January 10 this is the opening race and Miss Keating's on the inside the baldy face filly and then silver Yankee and silver ruling as they turn the corner 400 to go and a Miss Keating on the inside and timely move going hammer and tong a length and a half to light Echo, then Golden Adventure, and the others headed by Anna Daniela to the 200 metres, and Miss Keating is just in front of Timely Move, and doing a shade better at about four or five lengths to Lightning Echo. Miss Keating running about a little bit, she's got the better of Timely Move, and then Lightning Echo, and the faves home in the first, Miss Keating wins at a length and a quarter to Timely Move. Second event went to the outsider Poncielli, who's uh, clear at this stage and untroubled really in the straight to defeat Shining Hero. The Queenslander Wandering Duke, disappointing, he's in red colours with the gold cap, labouring in about sixth or seventh place, with two or three off the fence. Bernard's pleasure and Shining Hero, night rain on the outside is plugging on and then Wandering Duke, but Poncielli inside the 200, leads about two lengths on Bernard's pleasure, Shining Hero and night rain on the outside, but it's still Poncielli in front of, they're not going to catch Poncielli, here's one for the bookie boys. Poncielli wins at a length and a half to Shining Hero. Third was Bernard's pleasure. Here's one for the favourites with I'm Ready taking out the third event. He didn't have a lot up his sleeve. Yarn was a very good run. He's in front at this stage, Yarn. I'm Ready getting through on the inside. And these two have a great battle in the straight. Getting a beautiful run through on the inside. Well, Eco, it's main dangers back fourth. And at the 200, I'm Ready has shaken off Yarn. Two lengths away next. Hope and pray Well, Eco won't run on. Then Magi's gift but 100 to go. Dittman starting to shake up I'm Ready. Yarn second running a very, very good race. I'm Ready holding Yarn a minute. Hope and pray and Murray's pick. But as they reach the line, it's a very good window, I am ready. 
Strong finish from Classic Hand in pink and black colours. Going to the outside at this stage, the widest runner. Classic Hand runs home very strongly to defeat to take the kitty in the American. Game third, feeling the strain, I'd say. A length, let's twist again. Going concern, French Legion getting a gap, and then Classic Hand on the outside. At the 200, the American leads. Take the kitties, kicking back on the inside. Little Classic Hand is rocketing down the outside. Here comes Classic Hand. He goes up to take the kitty, take the kitty, and Classic Hand, and Classic Hand doing too well. And Classic Hand draws away. Main event was the Villiers Stakes and its Roman artist in front at this stage, right back to his best yesterday. He scores from Silver Award who rockets home and Splendid Speed. ...from Picata Pico, breakdancer, Splendid Speed. Cardshire getting a split and wider out as China Garden and then so tip and plumb sure. Roman artist riders gone for the whip at the 200 metres a length clear. On the outside, Splendid Speed, Card Shark followed then by Pico, but it's still Roman artist in front past the 100 metres. Splendid Speed trying to get him and Silver Award fly home but Roman artist will win the money it's breakers a length and quarters the sixth tip, event went to uh, regal realm outside. defeating era king My and lady jordana when the leader went and as they come around the home corner it's twin alps in front bun garby's gone to second and headed twin alps too here's regal realm joining in quickly now and regal realm goes to the lead at the 250 and regal realm raced away now lady jordana second from bun garby era king and twin alps won't run a place but regal realm in front of hundred to go. Lady Jordana and Ara King won't pick up Regal Realm and kept going with the persuader. Regal Realm wins it by nearly two lengths. Second home was Ara King and third Lady Jordana. The outsider from Moli rocketing home to take out the seventh from Jukebox Jury and Rama King. A link mighty just as Jukebox Jury, a rather Black Valley dropping back on the inside and Lycan Ladies last over the rise. Well in the straight and Rocket Lad leads the way from Rama King. Jukebox Jury trying to get between them. A link the ladies Illa from Moli running a bit of a race on the outside. Addictive won't go on. Neither will Clamata Rocket Lad being taken on by the Ruffy from Moli. Jukebox Jury and Rama King. But here's from Moli right down the outside with Craig Comedy aboard and from Oli. From Oli's beaten jukebox jury and Rama King has run third. The solidly backed uh, Lucky Raz in a close second place as they swing for home in the final event and always in control in the straight to defeat Essential and Petrus. Two to clear picture and then Essential. Like a lunch the outside Petrus, the rails, Durai Blue back fourth last and is under the stick but Lucky Raz raced alongside and put the head in front of Must Away at the 200. Two lengths to Essential, clear picture and volley row but Lucky Raz, Rob Thompson getting the best out of this chestnut bloke. He's about two lengths clear, Essential running home pretty well but it's in vain and Lucky Raz will win. Lucky Rast to the post a length and three quarters. Second is essential. Petrus got up for third. A decisive victory to Lucky Raz in the final event at Randwick. Now the TAB information for the Villiers Stakes Day at Randwick and the numbers are this is tricky <laughs> the numbers are this is my Christmas gift, I think. The numbers, uh, here we go, 7 and 16, the double, $821.60, and the treble, 1, 7 and 16, $3,924.50, and the extra double from Randwick, 7 and 3, paid $32.40. We'll take a break now in sports scene, wrap some knuckles, and come back and have a look at the Mooney Valley meeting. Winning treble, and second in two other events, so it could easily have been uh, five for the day. The opening event went to Michael Clark, continuing his uh, incredible run of success. He's on the favourite, Capstad, in a... Clay on, actually, Taking over now on the outside, the horse with the blink is on. He goes on to record a most stylish victory. The 200 metre mark, raced away, three lengths in front of Spinator, who made the turn badly. Crush battling on from Cindy's appeal. Karpstad Clark keeps it going, though. It's safely home. Coming home very well as Crush, but Karpstad for the money. A length and a half Crush. Two lengths away, third Spinator. All the way in the second event to I'm a Micah defeating Starlight Rebel and Kiwi Magic. On the turn from Barbie's game, Solar Flame. Kiwi Magic under the whip and Starlight Rebel starting to shoulder its way through. I'm a Micah straightened up though, got a length and a half. Barbie's game, this little filly's in front. I'm a Micah, she's only a pony, she's in front of Barbie's game and Kiwi Magic. Starlight Rebel gets out but it'll be too late. I'm a Micah gets the money, a length on the line to Kiwi, uh, Starlight Rebel second. Kiwi Magic got third. Annesley Rose and Karen A had a good struggle all the way down the straight in the third event. A protest lodged here on behalf of the runner-up Karen A quickly dismissed. Back with Sunny Crest in the straight. Annesley Rose went for home, kicked a length in front of Karen A on the outside, trying to bridge the gap. Annesley Rose, the leader. Karen A is cutting it down with every stride from Bonapella. Annesley Rose hanging on, drifted out a little bit, got there. Wanted a head on the post to Karen A. They did bump, I reckon, about 50 off the line. 
Another protest entered in the fourth event with Burnbray lad and Bells are calling, getting very close together on a couple of occasions. You'll notice just there on the corner, nothing much between them right by the line. ...50 out from Burnbray lad the fence, then Roman Laurel not doing enough and Mongo running on well. Bells are calling in front, Burnbray lad comes again, Burnbray lad kicks again and gets the money. Burnbray lad a half head on the post to Bells are calling, Mongo flew home to run third at... Victory to Maund in the uh, fifth event with affected clear at this stage and untroubled a defeat to Game Priest and Mally Bronze. Rich brother who nearly fell, then Cooper's Gold getting out, but at the 150 and affected full of running. Three in front now of Mally Bronze, Cooper's Gold and Game Priest from last, but affected will break through today. He'll get the money affected. He goes to the line to win it by a length and a half. Almost a dead heat between Mally Bronze and Game Priest, a big run for second. Judges rules, a little bit easy in the betting, but he scores comfortably in the sixth event. He's the horse on the inside there with the yellow cap and goes away to defeat Gloaming Kauru and Warlike. The leader is judges rule at the 150 metre mark. Gloaming Kauru trying to run it down. They're clear of Warlike and West Mayo, but the three-year-old's too good for them. Judges rule kept going and judges rule has scored on the line a length and a half to Gloaming Kauru. Pretty plume in the uh, green colours there, clear as they straighten up, and uh, goes on to defeat Cammy and Wicked Smile, the favourite, a little bit disappointing. On the outside, trying to peg it back, a gap to Cammy and Fairy Zappa, but the leader, Pretty Plume, at the 100 metre marker length in front, trying hard, Wicked Smile, Cammy rattling down the outside, but it's Pretty Plume, the treble for Morn, and Pretty Plume gets the money. Pretty Plume has scored nearly a length, uh, Cammy maybe from Wicked Smile for second. Lots of ice, third as they approach the home turn and the uh, yellow cap just moving towards the outside. Comes the post very generously, defeat to Gourmet Prince. He straightens in front today, share the feeling, is he going to keep going? No, lots of ice is going to get him. Gourmet Prince wider out, lots of ice, grab the lead. Gourmet Prince coming after him, but lots of ice the leader and lots of ice will get the money. A length and a quarter, Gourmet Prince, third home is Sapphire Lad. Sack Goblet backed in from 10s to 7s, took out the final event and did it in pretty impressive style from Light Up and Torval. She's four in front of Torval and Timid missed the rail and then a gap to Light Up uh, making good ground at the 150 though and still Goblet three lengths in front of uh, Torval down the outside with the late runners Light Up and then Atlantic Crisis but Goblet will land some good bets in the last. Goblet getting tired but wins two lengths. Light Up is second and Ickaway third. Well, they were the nine events from Mooney Valley yesterday, and now the TAB information. And the numbers here, 12 and 6, the double, $108.30. The treble, free 12 and 6, paid $641.60. And the extra double from Mooney Valley, 2 and 4, paid $66.30. Well, a huge week in racing. Wednesday is the uh, meeting at Bundamber. It's free for the ladies, so that's going to be uh, a highlight up there. Plenty of giveaways, including $100 uh, worth of underwear for some lucky lady. And then, of course, the double header at Eagle Farm next Friday and Saturday, and Eagle Farm, the bent venue for both of those. Well, uh, we'd like to wish all our uh, sports scene race followers uh, a Merry Christmas, a happy and healthy uh, 1987. And Peter, back to you. Thanks, Pat, and a happy Christmas to you and to all our viewers.